Willkommen zur Hans-Jessen-Show Nummer 19. Schon wieder eine Spezialausgabe. Das bedeutet, ich sitze nicht alleine hier im Studio, sondern mit Gast. Das ist Omri Böhm. Hallo. Sei herzlich willkommen. Ein paar der Zuschauer sagen jetzt, den habe ich doch schon mal gesehen. <lacht> mit Omri Böhm hat es doch letztes Jahr ein Interview mit Thilo Jung äh, gegeben. So, die paar, die dich nicht kennen, denen sagst du jetzt, wer du bist. Omri Böhm, um, originally from Israel. Um, mm -hmm. I've uh, worked for a long time now in the, U in the US. I'm a, a associate professor of philosophy at the New School for Social Research uh, in New York. Also live um, part of the time in Berlin um, and write occasionally on uh, philosophical, political themes that have to do also often with Israel. Ähm, eine der, und jetzt hast du unterschlagen, dass du im Grunde perfekt Deutsch sprichst. <lacht> ja. <lacht> ja, ja, es ja, stimmt. Ja. Komm, doch, sag, äh, sag woher deine deutschsprachigen äh, Kenntnisse kommen. Du hast, glaube ich, eine deutsche ja, Das habe ich schon gehabt. eigentlich zum letzten Mal. Also ja, das, das ist jetzt für die, die es beim letzten Mal nicht habe, gesehen habe. Das okay. auch ja. mehr oder weniger geklärt. Also ja. perfekt weiß ich nicht, aber mehr oder weniger fließend. Mhm. Um, ich habe auch in Heidelberg uh, studiert und da habe ich angefangen, mehr und mehr Deutsch uh, zu sprechen, zu lesen. Um, uh, meine Großmutter und Großvater, die waren uh, Deutsch. Mhm. Also ich bewege mich schon uh, im Deutschen, aber in solchen Interviews spreche ich lieber Englisch, um okay, ganz so effektiv ja. zu bleiben. Das ist, das ist die Verabredung, die wir äh, getroffen haben. Ja. Ähm, Im weiteren Verlauf, das kennt ihr, das ist äh, sozusagen das Strukturmerkmal der Hans-Jessen-Show, ähm, dass ihr, ah, da ist die Kamera, sorry, das, da steht noch eine rum, die hat mich irritiert. <lacht> Gut, also äh, ihr wisst, ähm, ihr werdet die Gelegenheit haben, etwa in einer halben Stunde geht das los, äh, mit euren Fragen, euren Anmerkungen, hier euch einzuschalten ins äh, Gespräch. Ähm, Omri versteht alles, auch die allerkompliziertesten Dinge auf Deutsch, also keine Scheu zu fragen. Ähm, aber wenn es kompliziert wird, hat er darum gebeten und möchte ich lieber auf Englisch äh, antworten, weil da fühlst du dich dann doch ein bisschen besser wir, wir zu Wir schaffen das dazwischen. Ja, also das okay. wird wirklich ja. kein Problem. Ja, ähm, du hast jetzt... Und, und das Thema heute ist natürlich die Situation äh, in Israel, in äh, Palästina. Ähm, es gab eine äh, interessante Umfrage in der vergangenen Woche, äh, ZDF Politbarometer. Die haben gefragt, und das war eine repräsentative Umfrage, ähm, die deutsche Bevölkerung, was denken Sie eigentlich, wer hat Schuld an den am jüngsten Konflikt äh, in Nahost? Ist es Israel? Sind es die Palästinenser? Und was glaubst du, wie sie geantwortet haben? Die Deutschen. <lacht> um, 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 was teilweise stimmt auch. Yeah. Um, I would guess, um, but it's a naive guess, mm -hmm. um, and I will hear from you in a second, uh, uh, the truth, uh, that they said that the Palestinians are um, um, responsible for the situation. Uh, but what is the truth then? Ja, die Wahrheit ist, ähm, dass von 100 Prozent, die gefragt wurden, haben 63 Prozent gesagt, ich weiß es nicht. Ooh. Ich kann es nicht einschätzen. That's a wonderful, it's, it's a wonderful answer. Yes. And it means that we have a chance. Exactly. Und die anderen, die verbleibenden, etwa 35, 37 Prozent, die waren gleichmäßig. Beide Seiten, so ungefähr 17 Prozent, die einen sagten, Israel ist schuld und die anderen sagten, die Palästinenser sind schuld. Also ein Urteil, das auf der einen Seite, ich war ganz überrascht, als ich diese Zahl äh, gehört habe, dass ich sehr ehrlich fand äh, und, und finde, weil der Konflikt, die Hintergründe des Konflikts, wenn man nicht nur guckt, welche Raketen äh, und Bomben fliegen jetzt hin und her, sondern was sind die Ursachen, die strukturell tiefen Ursachen des Konflikts, wenn da eine Mehrheit von Menschen sagt, ich kann es nicht beurteilen, das ist, ich finde das realistisch. 
it's not just realistic. It's in my view, it's uh, surprising mm-hmm. and it's beautiful. It means that um, uh, Kant's enlightenment has a chance mm-hmm. because uh, people understand that if they want to have a judgment, then they have to think. Mm-hmm. And uh, the fact that the majority of the people um, give that answer and that the rest are uh, fertile mm-hmm. shows, in my view, a lot of responsibility among the people who were asked. And I understand uh, we shouldn't be too dramatic and pathetic, but um, if it was a representative yep. Umfrage, then um, um, it shows a lot of res- um, responsibility among the people. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, yeah. Also das kann ich sagen, dass das äh, war schon eine repräsentative Umfrage, die veröffentlichen auch immer ähm, die Methodik, mit der sie äh, erhoben wird, das, das war repräsentativ. Und weil du eben äh, Kant's Aufklärung äh, erwähnt hast, <lacht> ja du hast das schon gesagt, da, da muss ich jetzt sagen, also deine Begeisterung für Deutschland hat viel mit Kant als Philosoph zu tun, äh, sozusagen der bekannteste, sein bekanntester Satz ist, wissen die meisten von uns, ähm, Aufklärung ist die Befreiung des Menschen aus seiner selbstverschuldeten Unmündigkeit. Gleichzeitig, und das muss ich dich jetzt fragen, Kant, von Kant gibt es grausame antisemitische Äußerungen. Er hat äh, die Juden als wörtliches Zitat Vampire der Menschheit äh, bezeichnet und hat ihre Euthanasie äh, gefordert. Euthanasie. Ähm, wie war es für dich, als Israeli möglich, ähm, dich in Kant und seine Philosophie zu verlieben. I'm glad that you ask this and um, um, I'm not surprised because many ask me that question. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I am a, um, a sort of a Kant expert, you can call it. Um, my main uh, work is on Immanuel Kant. When I started working on Kant, it was obvious that um, Kant is a humanist philosopher in the best sense of the term. In the meantime, um, the interesting fact is that people do not even challenge his humanism. Rather, they claim that his humanism is the source of his racism, anti-Semitism, and so forth, because what we're witnessing is a certain delegitimation of humanism. Universalism is considered uh, to be... um, the way to exclude people. You say everybody has uh, equal rights, everybody has the same würde, but not everybody belongs to everybody. Mm-hmm. The Jews not. Of course, there are uh, more um, uh, quotes from Kant that are just as horrifying, not just about uh, Jews, also about uh, black people, uh, Native Americans, and so forth. My view is that um, in Kant's case, those views have to be definitely not, uh, we should not pretend that they do not exist, but um, they do not pose the problem that most people think uh, that they pose. And the reason is that for Kant, universalism has nothing to do with a scientific opinion or a scientific even knowledge about um, specific human beings. I do not care at all what Kant thought about Jews I do not care what Kant thought about uh, black people. Um, I do think that um, um, his theory, that is a Kantian philosophy, the categorical imperative, is not only independent from what he thought about um, those people, but rather um, it is precisely the way to understand why it ought means nothing, who those people are. Um, bevor wir, äh, Omri, ja, bevor wir jetzt, ich, ich äh, <lacht> merke deine Leidenschaft, wir können jetzt zwar kein Kant-Seminar äh, äh, <lacht> einleiten, aber inwiefern hilft Kant, und äh, du hast das eben auch nochmal angesprochen, sein kategorischer äh, Imperativ, ähm, verhalte dich stets so, dass die Maxime deines Handelns ein allgemeines Gesetz sein könnte. Ähm, wie hilft das, die Situation in Israel und zwischen Israel äh, und Palästina im Moment zu verstehen und zu beurteilen. Ist das eine praktische Hilfe? Yes, I think so. Um, um, you know, I was glad when I published my book on Israel, uh, what is it, a year ago, that many people actually pointed out that the book was written by a Kantian. Because it was written by a Kantian. For example, it was not written by someone who comes to this discussion as um, uh, a post-colonial critic. 
or um, um, as um, um, say a Frankfurt School philosopher. It was written by a Kantian who is committed to universalism and who thinks that universalism ought to be defended at all costs. The lives of Jews count exactly the same as the lives of Palestinians. The rights of Jews count exactly the same as the rights of um, uh, Palestinians. And um, the situation is so complex that it's extremely difficult to come up with what seems to be a viable, realistic alternative. And that's actually one of the um, uh, most important aspects of Kant's philosophy, is that because it demands absolutely no, it accepts absolutely no compromise mm -hmm. on questions of politics, it demands radical hope. You ought to achieve what ought to happen from a moral perspective. That's yeah. the uncompromising attitude with which I come to the Arab-Israeli or the Palestinian-Israeli conflict as well. Lass, lass uns da, ähm, könntest du mit der Hilfe von Kant auf diese ganz simple Frage, ähm, wir haben jetzt äh, im Grunde zwei oder drei Wochen einer grausamen Gewaltspirale, ich weiß jetzt auch kein besseres Wort, aber, aber grausamer Gewalthaftigkeit zwischen Israel auf der einen Seite, vor allem der israelischen Regierung und, und ihren Machtmitteln und äh, Palästinensern äh, erlebt, lässt sich die Frage beantworten, hat jemand, ist ein Schuldiger, eine schuldige Seite zu identifizieren für diese jüngste Phase des Konfliktes? It's not easy to answer this. My perspective, my view is that there is uh, in this case, uh, in this specific event, um, you can name um, a responsible side more clearly than uh, usual, and that is Israel. This will not surprise uh, a lot of viewers that this is my position, but I can explain it in a moment. Um, um, I actually want to insist, um, since we have a lot of time in this program, we do. I want to go back for a second and say another word about Kant. <laughs> okay. I will let you, I, we will move on to Israel after that. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I want to say it for the following reason. Look, there is a lot of talk these days about identity politics. I want to point out identity politics or Zionism is a form of identity politics. And it's probably um, the main form of identity politics. Uh, hold on. Um, jetzt musst du erklären, was Zionismus für dich ist, weil das ist ein Schlüsselbegriff. Zionismus, um, as it is understood now by most people, is a view that the Jewish people has a right for a Jewish state in Palestine. Mm -hmm. And um, that is a form of identity politics. And it has a structure of identity politics very much as we know it in current discussions today. Um, The Jewish people um, have a, a particular history. They have been uh, uh, persecuted and, um, you know, there was a Holocaust, obviously, and um, not just a Holocaust, years of persecution, has, have proven to the Jewish people and to the world that universalism, nice liberalism, do not protect the lives and the rights of Jews. And for that reason, Jews have to have their own politics And if you, as someone who is not Jewish, or indeed if you come as someone who is Jewish, and you criticize this identity politics from a universalist perspective, you're a racist. Because your universalism is actually only possible for those in power. That's the main argument, extremely familiar mm -hmm. um, uh, in those discussions. And that's a form of identity politics. Now, um, and I, I would say if there is an identity politics that's ever justified, then that's one of them. Now, of course, the Palestinians now have similar claims. And the Palestinians have similar claims because Zionism is also a form of colonialism. And that also cannot be denied. Um, definitely the original Zionists did not deny it. And definitely, even if we just remain on a minimal level, the settlers today are colonialists. Settlement, the settlement project is definitely a colonialist project. So Zionism is, to the very least, deeply related to colonialism. So if we go to the Palestinians and we run with the Palestinians uh, post-colonial identity politics, anti-universalist arguments, then we have here two identities that fight against another. I think that this is actually a good example of why only universalism can save us. Precisely where this is the most complex. And this is an example of why I think Kant is so important. 
leave aside his awful, terrible comments uh, um, uh, made uh, 200 years ago and more, and focus on the question whether humanism is a way to overcome the complex questions of today. Wenn wir ähm, jetzt nicht nur gucken, Tempelberg, und es ist eben dann die Geschichte äh, Ost-Jerusalems, was von der israelischen Seite nicht akzeptiert wird, right. als äh, das, was es zu sein hat, nämlich für die Palästinenser ein freier Ort, sondern es wird betrachtet ähm, und äh, hat von der vorherigen US-Administration in furchtbarer Weise auch noch Unterstützung bekommen. Es wird als, als im Grunde rein israelisches Territorium betrachtet, wo Palästinenser vielleicht Besuchsrechte haben, aber keine originären eigenen Rechte. Ähm, wenn wir es nicht darauf reduzieren, sondern zurückgehen zu den Jahrestagen, die man eigentlich feiern oder an die man denken muss, nächstes Jahr sind es 100 Jahre her, dass Palästina vom Völkerbund als britisches Mandatsgebiet, als Resultat auch des Ersten Weltkriegs, des zerfallenen Osmanischen Reiches, vor 100 Jahren haben die Briten angefangen, in diesem Mandatsgebiet, und der Anspruch war, eine staatliche Heimstätte für die in der Welt zerstreuten Juden zu bauen. Das ist 100 Jahre her. Mhm. Was wir dann erlebten nach dem Zweiten Weltkrieg und bis heute sind im Grunde traurige Bruchstücke dieser Vision, die aber bedeuteten, um einem vertriebenen Volk eine eigene Staatlichkeit zu geben, wurde die Staatlichkeit einem anderen Volk, den Palästinensern, praktisch geraubt. Es sind also Du kannst mir zustimmen oder sagen, nee, so war es nicht. Haben wir es nicht mit im Konflikt mit Israelis, also Juden und Palästinensern, mit dem Konflikt zweier unterschiedlich strukturierter Opfergruppen zu tun? We do have um, uh, two um, different peoples with different histories. Uh, they're both, um, they have histories of victimhood. Um, and that's obviously uh, an extremely important um, component of what we're seeing. Uh, first of their legitimate claims, they want to defend themselves uh, as get to um, survival. Um, and second, um, those are very different ones, right? So for example, um, uh, the Jews were not uh, um, uh, mainly persecuted by Palestinians. Mm -hmm. right. There were, um, uh, for the most part, uh, their problems came from Europe. Of course, there were also uh, issues in the Middle East. There were also issues in um, um, Palestina and with Palestinians. There is now a trend of trying to emphasize this um, and uh, really uncover, quote unquote, uncover just how racist the Palestinians were against Jews in order to basically present them as um, um, people who do not have a political struggle with Israel, but rather are, have an anti-Semitic struggle with Israel, right? Once you frame the Palestinians as uh, not victims of the situation, but rather as the new Nazis, then uh, you can sort of solve the complex situation that um, uh, you presented. And I think this is what it is. It's, co it's complex. The Palestinians are, vic are victims of the situation, but the Jews are victims of another situation also. And um, um, that's part of the complexity. That's also, this will be may this, this may take us a bit uh, far afield now for this discussion, but um, in the books that I've written on Israel, I actually make this central to the solution. Um, the relation of Israel to the history of the Holocaust and the relation of Israel to the history of the Nakba, of uh, the expulsions of Palestinians, the way in which in the end, um, the Palestinians, you know, to say they lost the land is uh, uh, to give a passive voice to something that was very active. The way in which uh, the land was uh, taken from them. Um, the relation, our relation to this past is probably uh, the most important key to the question of the future. Das bedeutet aber, wenn ich dich richt richtig verstehe, dass du sagst, um, unser Verhältnis zur, Vergangenen, zur Vergangenheit, zu der des eigenen Volkes wie der des anderen, muss ein Verhältnis von Reflexion sein, 
der eigenen wie der anderen, damit wir nicht in die Gefahr kommen, das, was, uns ange was der einen Seite angetan wurde, jetzt mit einer scheinbaren Legitimation, weil wir ja Opfer sind, ja. der anderen Seite anzutun. Right. Sondern, die, sondern vielleicht eine Anerkennung, dass beide Seiten in unterschiedlicher Weise historisch Opfer gebracht haben, zu Opfern gezwungen wurden. Das müssen beide Seiten anerkennen, um dann zu sagen, der Weg daraus in eine Zukunft kann nicht sein, dass es jetzt wieder Täter und Opfer gibt. It's complex for um, many reasons. I think I agree with uh, um, uh, the direction you seem to be taking it. But don't forget that um, the Jews and the Palestinians have also had their own war mm. uh, for uh, a long time now. It depends how you count. Maybe 100 years, maybe less. But um, it has been a brutal war. And um, no need now to solve uh, the competition who was worse or, or um, who would have been worse if he had more power or something like that. Um, um, so on the top of the question of the past, the deeper past, there is also um, the more recent past. There is the occupation of the Palestinian people now. There are events like the bombing of Gaza. There are events like suicide bombs in the center of Tel Aviv um, and so forth and so forth. And for that reason, there is a uh, real animosity that's tied also to more concrete politics today, mm -hmm. but there's also the past. I think that part of the problem in Israel right now is that the politics of the past, again, forces people into some kind of identity that undermines the power of citizenship. Um, citizenship is at least the beginning of um, the way to overcome the future because um, there's not going to be a two-state solution. I think that people now sort of know that. They begin to recognize that. Um, uh, it's about time. But it means that the solution that uh, will have to emerge, however it will look, will not depend on drawing borders. It will have to do with a new concept of citizenship. It will have to do with um, somehow managing to construct some kind of, of a constellation where people are equal citizens on the whole territory. If those people have different histories where each one of them is considered a victim and indeed a victim of the other side, then um, that concept of citizenship would be impossible. Mm -hmm. So um, probably the, the way to um, construct it would have to have some kind of a muscular politics of memory to try to start um, reorganizing the way we relate to also the past. Wenn du, wenn du ähm, sozusagen sagst, äh, die, die Lebensorganisation, die politische Organisation der Zukunft kann eigentlich nicht auf unterschiedlichen Identitäten in abgeschlossenen Staaten äh, fokussiert sein, sondern muss sich, wie du sagst, äh, Citizenship, also an Bürgerrechten an, an den Rechten der zivilen Bürger als Bürger, unabhängig von Ethnie, unabhängig von Religion begründet sein. So When you say it, it seems obvious, no? Yeah. That this is the way it ought to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, wir haben, und die, die Frage wird auch schon im Chat jetzt äh, gestellt, äh, wir haben es historisch in verschiedenen Ländern der Welt äh, erlebt, dass sich innerhalb von Staaten oder auch zwischen Staaten Systeme von Apartheid, also Trennung, herausgebildet haben, die aber eigentlich die letzte Stufe vor dann einer Überwindung der Apartheid äh, ist, weil die Apartheid war wie zwei, zwei Mauern, die sich gegenseitig stützen, obwohl sie beide schwach sind und dann bricht es zusammen. Haben wir in Israel, in der Region, in Palästina, eine Situation von Apartheid, die sich jetzt verschärft hat. Es gibt inzwischen, äh, gerade in den USA, in den Medien, zunehmend Stimmen, die diesen Begriff verwenden. I think that the situation in Israel is complex. Um, um, I don't think that there is a simple yes or no answer to that question, but I think that um, we need to problematize uh, in a serious way Israel's similarity to apartheid. 
So l- first, let's say what I think should be easy to say. The situation in the West Bank and in Gaza mm-hmm. is a, simil- a situation that's um, akin to apartheid. Um, in, in some ways, it may be worse. It's some, in some ways, it may not be exactly apartheid as we know it. It's complex. Um, but the situation is such that if you're a Jew who lives in the West Bank, then you live inside of Israel. The lies about the um, uh, green line, the lies that this is actually occupied territory or a territory that um, um, still hasn't been annexed or something like that. Those are all deceptions that are um, um, basically embraced by those who want to remain comfortable in relation to the state of Israel. Jews who live in the West Bank live inside of Israel. Non-Jews, the three million non-Jews who live in that territory um, are not subjected to Israeli law. They do not vote to the uh, parliament. They are subjected instead to an aggressive military uh, regime. That's, um, uh, if that's not apartheid, um, I'm not sure, frankly, what is. That has been the situation for decades now. Um, Israel has a research university in the West Bank. Israel uh, has public schools in the West Bank. You know, I don't know about you. I have a, a kid. I send him to public school. I would not have liked um, my son to go on uh, uh, school trips from a public school to an occupied territory. Who has heard about such a crazy idea? Mm-hmm. Of course, in Israel, not only that they send kids to an allegedly occupied territory, uh, the West Bank, um, uh, to school trips. There are Israeli public schools in this allegedly occupied territory. This is a part of Israel and the three million Palestinians who live there do not vote, are not subjected to Israeli law. They're subjected to laws decided by military generals. Also es gibt eine zwei Klassen Gesellschaft in den besetzten Gebieten und das ist ein Zeichen von äh, Apartheid. Human Rights Watch, sozusagen eine der größte Men- oder die größte Menschenrechtsorganisation der Welt, hat jetzt einen mehr hundert Seiten starken Bericht ähm, veröffentlicht, glaube ich 350 oder so Seiten, ähm, wo sehr klar und sehr detailliert ausgeführt wird und wenn Human Rights Watch das sagt, das ist ein Wort und eine Bewertung von Gewicht und sie werfen ähm, der israelischen Politik, der israelischen Regierung das Syst- ein, eine systematische Verbreitung von Apartheidsstrukturen vor. Look, um, I understand why Germans are so afraid of the world. They are afraid of the world because um, um They have a history and they have a baggage, a serious baggage that needs to be taken extremely seriously and carefully. And calling the Jewish state an apartheid state is basically calling it a racist state, right? When you say that the state of Israel um, um, uh, perpetrates apartheid, you're saying something um, uh, um, more than merely Mm -hmm. um, that you disagree with its politics, You're saying something that's more than even disagree with, say, the slogan of the Jewish and Democratic that you may have mm. questions about. Yes, it's, it's a fundamental um, critique. This is, this is a critique that, yeah. um, that um, let's put it this way. For example, if people start recognizing that this is apartheid, the whole debate about BDS mm. has to change. Um, for I do not support BDS, uh, but let us, let's at least agree that if Israel is apartheid, then the question of boycotting it is uh, completely different. Mm-hmm. I take it, uh, this is why it's so sensitive. Oder, lass mich das sagen an der Stelle, ähm, der, der Begriff Apartheid kam äh, im Zusammenhang der südafrikanischen Diskussion. Da war klar, es gab Apartheid und es gab deutsche Politik, ähm, die Boykottpolitik äh, gewesen war gegenüber dem System, weil man sagte, das ist Apartheid, das unterstützen wir nicht. Das wäre eigentlich dann die Konsequenz. Yes, I want to mention two things in this mm-hmm. regard. First, in 1977, Menachem Begin, not an extreme uh, left, not an anti-Deutsch, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least, yeah. um, uh, was Israel's prime minister. He mm-hmm. gave a speech um, from the podium of the Knesset, Israel's parliament, and he said, we are controlling the West Bank and Gaza. We are not going to agree to a two-state solution. Menachem Begin uh, uh, would not have dreamt of accepting a two-state solution. But for that reason, Menachem Begin proposed 
um, to give all Palestinians in those territories full Israeli citizenship, um, to open the borders completely, to um, um, grant them the right to elect and be elected to parliament, to have full freedom of movement on the whole territory, full economic rights, the right to walk on the whole territory, and make them citizens. So obviously, um, uh, all those freedoms would be given to them. And he warned, and this is a quote, it's too bad I didn't bring it to you. He says, if we will not do that, we will become like Rhodesia. Rhodesia, mm. of course, was the symbol of mm. a white supremacist uh, apartheid state. And his warning in front of the parliament was, we have to do that because we do not want to become a Jewish Rhodesia. This is mm -hmm. 40 years ago, a bit more than 40 years ago. This is before Israel had the research university in the West Bank, before we had the autobahn in, um, in the West Bank, um, und, so, um, und so weiter und so fort. Um, jetzt hören wir aus äh, die, die Position der israelischen Regierung und der Regierungen der, der letzten Jahre war immer, dass gesagt wurde, ähm, wir sind immer noch äh, als israelisches Volk als jüdisches Volk, in einer Bedrohungssituation. Die Palästinenser akzeptieren immer noch nicht äh, das Recht, äh, mindestens die militanten Gruppen akzeptieren nicht Israels Recht auf eine eigene äh, souveräne Staatlichkeit. Und sie sagen, wir haben eine demografische Entwicklung, die die ähm, islamischen Anteile der Bevölkerung wachsen lässt, sodass wir befürchten müssen, auf einmal die Minderheit in der Region im Staat zu sein. Und deswegen halten wir an einer Politik fest, die sagt, wir müssen uns dafür, davor schützen, in eine Minderheit äh, zu kommen, die dann vernichtet wird. Wie plausibel äh, oder was entgegnest du dieser Rechtfertigungsposition so vieler israelischer Regierungen? This is very complicated, um, especially in the way you formulate it. First, some facts. It is not the case that um, we have to worry that we will become the minority in the region. We are the minority in the region. People today sometimes count, um, they claim that um, inside of Israel live approximately, what is it, um, approximately 73, 74% Jews and the rest more or less are Palestinians. This is a lie and we have to say it again and again. This is a lie that's created by um, the familiar method of gerrymandering, drawing the borders mm -hmm. and uh, counting in all sorts of uh, awkward ways in order to produce this. The Bureau of Statistics of the State of Israel produces those numbers in the following method. It takes Israel map that by all means includes the West Bank. I'll say it again because there is no other map. It takes Israel's map that by all means includes the West Bank, and it counts all the Jews who live in this territory. And then it takes the same map, and it counts on that map only the Jews who live inside of Israel's 67 borders. They do not count the three million Palestinians who live uh, in the West Bank. This is how the number is produced. Now, if you just count, um, I don't think you need to be a radical Kantian, in order to do that. If you just count human beings who live on that map, you get approximately 47 to 53% Jews. So the Jews are a tiny majority. Um, um, so, um, they have um, uh, a slight majority mm -hmm. in that area. However, we haven't said a word about Gaza. In Gaza live approximately two uh, million more uh, Palestinians. Once you count them, the Jews are already the minority. So let's Uh, we need to stop talking about the fear that the Jews will become um, uh, the minority. The Jews are the minority and the Jews control the whole area. That needs to be stated. This is not something that's generated, say, by my idea of a binational state. That's the situation on the ground. And the question is, how are you going to solve it? Liberal Zionists fought to their last drop of blood If you ask me also um, uh, to the verge of insanity um, by denying reality 
for the two-state solution in order to avoid this reality. This is why they want to actually regrow that border and, um, um, and establish a Palestinian state, and the Jews would remain the majority in their state. That's not going to happen. So the question is, how are we going to do that? That's to answer part of your question. You said the Jews are afraid to be a minority because they are afraid to be vernichtet. Mm -hmm. That word is already a word that um, is spoken by a German. Um, um, ich zitiere, ich zitiere, yeah. so no, no. wie ich sie verstehe, uh, die Legitimationsversuche der israelischen Politik. The idea is already to, uh, to make this a zero-sum game, because mm -hmm. if, if we will be a, um, um, the minority in the territory, then there will be another Holocaust. So, the only, so since we are the minority in the territory already, the only way not to have a second Holocaust is to be the Teta, right? Um, to have apartheid, to have occupation. Um, there is not going to be a two-state solution. So either we will control the Palestinians, and if they will revolt, if they will attack us, then um, our non-negotiable right to self-defense uh, will include um, um, massive attacks uh, on civilian populations because we have to defend ourselves from Vernichtung. And once you said Vernichtung, then the discussion is over because um, uh, you do not discuss rationally the question of uh, we should or should not support the next Holocaust. Of course we shouldn't. If that's a discussion, if it's not about politics, um, if it's a zero-sum game of survival, then uh, there is not much to discuss. I think that, that those terms need to be changed. Um, um, we are the minority. The Palestinians, of course, have their own terrorist organizations. We Jews have our own terrorist organization and the military that has for now more than 50 years been the main um, um, uh, agent uh, um, that's promoting uh, crimes against civilian populations. Hasn't du warst selber beim Militär? Yes. Yeah. Um, 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 by all means. Um, so, yes, there are those powers uh, there. But the question is whether we can have a way of insisting on rational, sane politics, despite um, the past of the Holocaust. Lass mich an der Stelle ähm, wirklich jetzt einen, den Brückenschlag <lacht> direkt in die, in die Gegenwart äh, machen. Ähm, ist es so, dass die Hamas und Netanyahu sich gegenseitig brauchen? Absolutely. I think that uh, um, this is um, something that maybe is not stated clearly enough. I think that um, once Israel has promoted the Oslo Accords, mm -hmm. um, that was of course Rabin's legacy or Peres' legacy, that's not so important right now. One could also debate whether the Oslo Accords were a good thing or a bad thing, whether they would have produced a Palestinian uh, state and a two-state solution or not. There are many debates about that. Um, we can put that aside for a moment and agree about the following thing. The Israeli right wanted to undermine Oslo because Oslo meant for them the establishment of a Palestinian state and the evacuation of settlements. The best way to prevent Oslo was to empower Hamas. I don't think that uh, anyone who knows what has been happening in the territory has any right that one of the people who supported Hamas the most was not Netanyahu, but Ariel Sharon. Mm -hmm. Ariel Sh in Ariel Sharon's days, uh, Hamas uh, surprisingly came to power also in Gaza. I think that um, there was, a, um, um, you know, you c I cannot now prove it, uh, but I think that uh, because I cannot prove it, uh, to ignore the fact that uh, um, um, Hamas is being empowered, for example, by uh, money uh, that's coming from uh, Arab countries, that, and Israel allows it. Um, at the same time, uh, um, uh, the PLO and the Palestinian Authority is being weakened and weakened. Look at, the last, at the, um, the last events now, in the last couple of weeks. Hamas has established itself as the only protector of the Palestinian people. Um, you might think that this is an awful failure of Benjamin Netanyahu. I don't think that he thinks about it in this, in this way. It is his main argument against the two-state solution. Um, if Hamas were not in power, one could perhaps, not anymore, but at least in Bibi's eyes, one could um, even discuss 
a two-state solution. Hamas does for Israel the following thing. It separates the Palestinians. As long as Hamas controls Gaza and uh, the Palestinian Authority controls the West Bank, um, you can always say that there is no such an entity as um, the Palestinian um, people represented by a government that can be seen as legitimate. And for that reason, you do not need to do politics with them. Um, uh, you uh, treat uh, one side as quasi-collaborators of the state of Israel mm -hmm. and the other side as a dangerous terrorist organization and you contain the situation. You say, we can just go on uh, uh, the way that we do because there is no other solution. Eine Art Gleichgewicht des Schreckens. Yes. And, uh, well, not between Israel and the no, Palestinians. No. Yeah. Uh, uh, because that there is no Gleichgewicht there. Yeah. If there were a Gleichgewicht there, yeah. then that would not be possible. Because yeah. um, uh, if we... Ja, know. Gleichgewicht ist das falsche yeah. Wort. Eine, eine Gleichzeitigkeit. Yes. Eine Gleichzeitigkeit des Schreckens, der aber asymmetrisch ist. Yeah. Das meinte ich damit äh, Netanyahu. Für Netanyahu ist die Hamas nützlich, weil äh, sie auch davon ablenkt, von den Problemen, die er selber hat. Er wäre möglicherweise längst verurteilt und gleichzeitig stabilisiert äh, der Kurs Netanyahus die Hamas-Führung, richtig? Absolut. Ja. Würdest du Gaza als ein Freiluftgefängnis bezeichnen? I'm afraid so. Yes, uh, Gaza has been under a blockade for I'm not sure how many years now, 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, people sometimes again like to say, going back to Ariel Sharon, that uh, Israel has evacuated Gaza because uh, We have evacuated all the settlements from Gaza and there are no military posts inside Gaza. By the way, I've been, I've seen Gaza from the inside uh, as a soldier myself, not uh, an, an easy or a pleasant place to be. Um, that's a lie again. Israel controls Gaza. Israel is actually the sovereign in Gaza. Many people don't know this. Um, the borders are controlled by Israel. Israel decides whether Gaza Uh, um, uh, will have an airport or a port at the sea. That's a decision mm. made by Israeli generals and Israel's minister of defense. Sometimes, because we're so used to the perverse reality in the West Bank, um, that it's not a reality of occupation, but we call it occupation. Um, we look at Gaza and we say, ah, Gaza is not occupied anymore. Um, Aber no, Gaza no, Gaza is, is occupied. Yeah. Gaza is occupied. Yeah. The West Bank is not under occupation. The West Bank is de facto part of Israel. Mm -hmm. Gaza is occupied. Indeed, it's occupied not by the method of having uh, the military inside it, mm -hmm. but rather it's occupied by um, the, military, yeah, the, the military controlling mm -hmm. its borders um, um, uh, on its own power. Mm -hmm. The state of Israel decides. Here's a quote by a person that most German viewers would not know. That's Chaim Ramon. Chaim Ramon uh, used to be an important Israeli politician be before he had some, uh, um, uh, whatever, personal scandals that uh, canceled him mm -hmm. uh, on the center left. Chaim Ramon, as he was a minister, um, um, once stated, look, our, um, our strategy needs to be uh, such that the people of Gaza are not hungry but that they are on a diet. What does it mean? It means that Israel controls at the moment even the amount of food mm -hmm. that goes into Gaza because Gaza cannot import anything without Israel letting it import. And of course, it cannot produce um, all um, uh, its needs, say, uh, for, uh, for food. Um, that's the situation right now in Gaza and it needs to be uh, stated. Ja, wir kommen ähm, auf Gaza mit Sicherheit nochmal zurück. Ich glaube, wir sollten jetzt anfangen zu telefonieren. Ähm, gut, wir reden noch ein, ja, setz mal das Ding auf und Thilo gibt mir dann das Zeichen, wann die erste Anruferin oder der erste Anrufer ähm, dabei ist. Äh, ich Bitte was? Ja, genau. Das Thema, das Thema ähm, wird dann sicherlich auch sein, ich hatte das vorhin schon mal kurz gefragt, was war der, was war der Auslöser für die Gewaltspirale, wenn man so will, ähm, oder den Konflikt der letzten Wochen? 
Kann man das definitiv Yeah, sagen. I think this is actually a, a very important question and I, I wrote down a note mm. to go back to it because you actually asked it and I did not answer. Right. It was uh, the question of guilt or responsibility. Mm. Who is responsible for um, the um, outbreak? The outbreak. Yeah. And usually, you know, usually you can have uh, academic discussions that are that do not necessarily lead somewhere where people debate uh, who's guilty. That's a question, maybe a kindergarten question sometimes and not um, a question for uh, serious politics. But here I think actually there was a moment where at least most people I spoke with in Israel, most people who would normally say, you know, when, when I present my views, would say, yes, yes, but the Palestinians are also not saints, which is, by the way, to be sure, true. Um, in this case, Many people that I've spoken with in Israel knew the truth. It was easier to recognize that the responsible side was Israel because it was all too clear that the responsible side was Benjamin Netanyahu. Um, I think that the outbreak that we saw had everything to do with his personal political agenda. And um, I can explain this in a moment. And because that was the situation, um, um, it was extremely difficult to deny that Israel is responsible to what happens. Now, let me give you a fast uh, crash mm -hmm. sketch of um, how we got to where we got. Benjamin Netanyahu, of course, as I think people who watch this show would know, Benjamin Netanyahu is standing before trial. He's already in the process of trial, and the trial seems to go in a way that um, uh, will very likely end in prison unless Bibi manages to um, remain a prime minister and somehow, using his power, avert that consequence. Israel has had multiple elections in the last couple of years, and Netanyahu has not managed to form a coalition that will keep him in power. However, the opposition has not managed to produce a government either. Now, in the last election, the one that just took uh, place, what is it, uh, two months ago, um, Netanyahu again, did not manage to have 61 uh, supporters, the necessary yep. minimum, yep. Yep. in order to have a coalition. Mm -hmm. And he did something remarkable. What he did for the first time, almost first time in Israeli history, I will not discuss now the one exception to this, um, for almost the first time in Israeli history, he legitimized the votes of Arab parties. Netanyahu found an Arab-Israeli representative, um, a head of an Arab party, who was willing to actually have a coalition with Netanyahu and together with him, something that's considered inconceivable, even often to the center and the left in Israel, um, uh, Netanyahu would have had 61 seats. He almost managed to have this coalition, and in the last moment, um, he failed, and he failed because the other side of this coalition, the extreme right, when I say extreme right, let me uh, rephrase, the explicitly fascist mm. right, people who have celebrated the assassination of Yitzhak Rabin, people who say explicitly that Arabs are not equal to Jews and have to be expelled from the land, mm. they were supposed to sit in Netanyahu's, um, or I, I will emphasize this even more, people who just a few years ago were not allowed to run to parliament because the Supreme Court excluded them from running to parliament because they are racists. They were supposed, in according to Netanyahu's plan, they were supposed to sit in the same government with the Arab parties. This almost worked, mm. but in the end, um, those people actually have, you know, they actually have an ideology mm. and they did not agree to sit with quote unquote terrorists. So Netanyahu did not have a coalition, but this backfired. How did it backfire? It, it backfired by the fact that now the opposition, um, the parties that were trying to create um, a coalition to replace Bibi, they also did not have 61 votes, not without the Arabs. <laughs> they did have them with the Arabs, and they would have never imagined going with the Arabs. This was tried in the last couple of years, and they didn't. They did not go with the Arabs. Um, but now they would, and now they could, because Netanyahu legitimized it. Because if Netanyahu did it, they can do this as well. Mm -hmm. The moment when they received the mandate to form a coalition uh, um, from Ruby Rivlin, Israel's president, um, uh, and were going to actually have this coalition, and I think this was, it seemed that this was a matter of days. 
That was a moment when um, Israeli troops uh, entered Al-Aqsa, fired stun grenades inside the mosque, mm -hmm. fired tear gas inside the mosque. I don't know if you realize this is something that's yeah, probably yeah. enough it's in order to ignite yeah, the whole yeah, Middle East. Yeah, yeah. This is not something that, you know. Yeah, um, man, muss es, man, man muss es sich vielleicht so vorstellen, dass um, am, uh, zu Ostern irgendjemand Tränengas in den Vatikan schießt. Uh, something like that. And, um, uh, and Jerusalem, don't forget, yeah. again, um, Jerusalem is occupied territory. Mm. If uh, Israelis forget that sometimes, the Palestinians don't. Um, that mosque is inside of, by international law, occupied territory that's controlled by a Jewish state. And its police officers, troops, enter that mosque with their shoes in the mosque mm. uh, and uh, do this violence. This was unprecedented. It was clear, we know today that uh, Netanyahu's intelligent forces were also very clear that if things like this will happen, then Hamas will shoot in the direction of Jerusalem. This is what happened. Um, I don't think that we're very surprised. Here's another way of putting this. Um, um, this would not have happened as long as Netanyahu himself was negotiating with the Arab parties. Yeah, okay. Also, um, <laughs> das ist... Uh, das ist eine interessante äh, Darstellung. Das bedeutet, dass Netanyahu in der Minute oder in der Situation, wo die Gefahr drohte, dass er tatsächlich von einer anderen Koalition unter Einschluss von arabischen Politikern ähm, aus dem Amt befördert worden wäre, da hat er Maßnahmen äh, in Gang gesetzt, wo er wusste, die setzen eine solche Reaktionskette in Gang, dass auf einmal diese Koalition mit den Arabern nicht mehr möglich werden würde. Das, It, das ist sozusagen das, das Modell, was du If the Arabs for a second were quote unquote legitimized, then they were not legitimized yeah. after this uh, happened and they would not have gone themselves with a, um, mm -hmm. a coalition led by um, right wing and teilweise extreme right wing Jews. I mean, the prime minister of the alternative to Netanyahu is in fact more right-wing than Netanyahu. <lacht> Naftali Bennett is uh, more ideologically on the right than Netanyahu. Wir haben den ersten Anrufer, die erste Anruferin. Hallo, wer ist da? Hallo, hier ist Mays aus Stuttgart. Wie war dein Name? Habe ich eben akustisch nicht verstanden. Mays. Mays, ja. Genau. Sei willkommen. Was ist deine Frage oder deine Hallo. Anmerkung? Ja, danke schön, dass ich da sein darf. Ich habe gerade auch die Diskussion sehr, sehr gespannt verfolgt. Und ähm, vielleicht auch ganz kurze kleine Anmerkung, was mir aufgefallen ist, als über die Nakba gesprochen worden ist, über den Zionismus und den Holocaust, da ist mir das Wort Gleichzeitigkeit ähm, eingefallen. Also einfach, dass diese Realitäten gleichzeitig nebeneinander, äh, nebeneinander existieren, ähm, existieren, aber auch anerkannt werden müssen, ohne sie gleichzustellen. Und ähm, also auch, dass diese Traumata ähm, bei den verschiedenen Gruppen anerkannt werden. Aber besonders die Nakba fehlt mir einfach im deutschen Diskurs. Und das wäre dann auch vielleicht so ein bisschen meine erste Frage ähm, an Herr Böhm. Also als jemand, der den israelischen, aber auch den deutschen Diskurs zum Nahostkonflikt ähm, kennt, welche Unterschiede sehen Sie da eigentlich? Und auch, welche Perspektiven kommen da zu kurz? Und wo können wir da in Deutschland auch lernen? Mhm. Darf ich äh, eine Sache vorweg sagen? Ich glaube, Omri hat nichts dagegen, wenn wir ihn alle, wenn wir ihn duzen. No? Ist das okay, Omri? Ja. Yes. Uh, okay, also there is this way. I will answer you however you call me, but um, yeah. that would be. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks for the question. Um, I agree that the Nakba is extremely important, um, first in order to understand the situation. And we need to understand the situation, because if we will not understand the situation, then we will not understand how to uh, solve it, how to address it, how to understand the rights of um, uh, Palestinians um, and so forth. So um, I want to first agree with you that the Holocaust and the Nakba, um, if I understand you correctly, they are definitely mm -hmm. not the same. And this has mm -hmm. to be uh, stated clearly because I think that sometimes uh, people think that because we have repressed the Nakba for such a long time, because uh, we've pretended that it didn't exist, then um, sometimes people think that when we now um, want to speak about the Nakba, we want to compare the Nakba to the Holocaust. I think that that comparison would be um, uh, an awful mistake. 
um, mm-hmm. as, and I don't think that this even needs to be explained. Uh, the crime of the Holocaust as uh, a systematic vernichtung of European Jewry um, um, is uh, a crime of a completely different order. Um, and um, I don't think that that's something that uh, need, needs further discussion. However, the Nakba was a crime. Um, and the Nakba um, uh, was an ex- a, a crime that was perpetrated by the state of Israel. And this is now important, not just in order, not just in self-defense, although it was also self-defense, Teilweise. Um, there was mm-hmm. a war going on. Uh, the Jews were the minority in the territory. And um, uh, keep in mind, this is uh, an event that happened uh, just a few years after the Holocaust. So I think the Jews back then had legitimate reasons to think that they were fighting for their lives. Um, so that was a war of survival. And in this war of survival, the horrifying crimes were part of an horrifying crime of expelling a population. When the war started, when uh, Israel's war of independence started, there were a million and two hundred Palestinians living in the territory and 600,000 Jews. In the end of the war, there were only 500,000 Palestinians left. Um, The Palestinian society was uh, basically crushed. Um, um, The documents uh, that prove um, uh, the existence of a policy, we don't have them. We do not have those documents. Um, But uh, there is massive censorship of documents by uh, um, uh, the Israeli government. Um, The the villages from which um, 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 the Palestinians escaped or were um, not escaped, were basically forced out because they were told that if they will not escape, then they will be massacred. Um, um, Those villages were immediately uh, bulldozed after the war. Um, um, Same for their fields. Those things uh, happened in a massive um, scale, and they need to be understood today in order to understand the way the Palestinian population now thinks about not just the past, but the present situation and the future. Because I think that they realize that if they will, um, their rights will not be guarded as one people, then they risk the chance of a return of the Nakba. Um, look, as I said, Israeli Jews are now the minority in the territories that are controlled by Israel. That's extremely dangerous. It's extremely dangerous because people sometimes like to um, lie to themselves that Israel cannot be a Jewish democracy if it doesn't have a Jewish majority. That's only part of the truth. The full truth, I think, is that Israel cannot exist as a Jewish state or indeed as a state if it has, or sorry, it can, it can exist as a state. It cannot exist as a Jewish state, democratic or not, um, with a non-Jewish Palestinian majority. So this creates the conditions for repetition of the Nakba, and we're in effect seeing the rehabilitation of Nakba politics um, um, at the heart of uh, the discussion in Israel. Also, ich würde gerne Mace noch die Gelegenheit geben, um, weil ich glaube, aus dem, was du gesagt hast, äh, mhm. da können auch noch weitere Fragen entstehen. Du hast ja mhm. äh, zum Beispiel äh, vorhin schon gesagt, die äh, Zwei-Staaten-Lösung funktioniert nicht. Äh, du hast auch die Frage äh, des Rückkehrrechts äh, angesprochen. Spielt das bei dir, Mace, auch eine Rolle in dem, was du gerne mit Omri besprechen möchtest? Oder hast du noch andere Fragen? Also natürlich, ähm, also Omri ist ja vor allem bekannt für, für die Lösung bzw. für den Vorschlag der Lösung ähm, eines Staates unter israelischer Souveränität, wenn ich das richtig verstanden habe. Und äh, meine Frage ganz konkret wäre zum Beispiel, inwiefern ist das eigentlich eine stabile Lösung? Weil unter dem Aspekt der Stabilität gehört ja nicht nur der Faktor des Friedens, sondern zum Beispiel auch soziale Kohäsion. Und wenn die nicht gegeben ist, dann führt das ja langfristig zum Beispiel zu noch mehr Konflikten, wie wir sie jetzt auch in jüdisch-arabischen Städten in Israel sehen. Ähm, deswegen auch so die Frage, wenn es jetzt einen, also einen Staat Israel gibt und ähm, die die Palästinenser werden da eingebürgert und kriegen auch die israelische Staatsbürgerschaft. Was ist mit der Frage der sozialen Kohäsion und inwiefern haben wir dann 
ein, einfach einen stabilen Start auf langfristiger Sicht, weil das sehe ich ehrlich gesagt nicht. In good days I do see that, but in bad days um, it's more difficult for me to see that. Let me just try, um, begin um, by slightly trying to slightly correct, um, since you presented my picture, it's extremely important mm -hmm. for me to say. I speak of the Haifa Republic, and I speak of the Haifa Republic among other things, because it's important, I think, to insist that there has to be full equality between Jews and Palestinians. And in the state of Israel, as a Jewish state, there will not be um, uh, such an equality. For that reason, I like to speak of the Haifa Republic, and the Haifa Republic has um, not two sovereign entities, but let's call them sub-sovereign um, 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 entities, where Jews and Palestinians, each uh, in its own side, exercises self-determination rather than sovereignty, and sovereignty belongs in the Haifa Republic to everybody together. Now, um, I think you corrected yourself uh, as, at some point when you said, you know, that I have a solution, not a solution, rather a suggestion mm -hmm. of a solution, and I think this yeah. is exactly what it is, and that's important. I think that, this, that the situation is extremely complex. I don't think that um, there's going to be a solution to it anytime soon. Um, and that the question that we need to ask ourselves is, what's the direction in which we are going? What's the actual politics that can give hope for people or hope to people that they can somehow produce a change for the better? Hope, not hope, not false hopes. Um, I'm not interested in giving people false hopes so that um, they will not be violent, but genuine hopes for a political future. Um, the idea of the Haifa Republic is meant to give such a vision. How exactly then to uh, construct this vision such that it will um, also ensure social rights, social stability, and so forth? I, I personally do not propose. Um, and um, I think that this can be attainable over a long uh, period of time. I think this needs to be negotiated, constructed, The, the image of the Haifa Republic is meant deliberately as what I call a half-baked cake. How exactly then mm -hmm. to bake it, um, we will have to um, consider with time. The question is whether that would be the direction um, where we, we would go. Also danke dafür, aber wenn wir von falschen Hoffnungen beispielsweise sprechen, also ist die Zwei-Staaten-Lösung weg, existiert sie einfach nicht mehr. Und ähm, wenn sie nicht mehr existiert, wer ist dafür verantwortlich? Und auch, wie steht die internationale Staatengemeinschaft dazu und besonders Deutschland? Mm -hmm. I think that the two-state solution is completely over. I've liked and likened the uh, uh, continued support of the two-state solution to... Um, um, the continuous denial of global warming. I think that um, um, I could take a moment if you'd like and explain why. I think um, that the two-state solution is over, not just because of the number of settlers, but maybe even more because of the number of Palestinians. Um, because it is a fact that um, between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea, there exists a Palestinian majority. And because mm -hmm. um, any, you know, even the most generous quote-unquote generous two-state offers, offer that majority about 22% of the land. It's a tiny land, um, uh, not Canada, say, or uh, I don't know. Um, so for that reason, um, that solution is bound to fail, not just because it's unjust, even though the fact that it is unjust to give 53% of the population 22% of the land, um, mm -hmm. but because... Such a compromise is not real compromise. It's a rotten compromise. You do not squeeze uh, the sovereignty of 53% uh, of the population um, in 22% of the land. And then when they refuse this compromise, you present them as people who refuse all compromise because they're anti-Semitic and basically what they want is to destroy uh, the Jewish state and um, uh, perpetrate a Vernichtung, right? Um, mm -hmm. If we want to have genuine politics, we need to overcome this type of um, dialectical argument, basically. 
That, notice something interesting. I haven't even said a word about this, the number of settlers, right? So throw in mm-hmm. on top of that 700,000 settlers. Um, let's pretend that we can evacuate only 350 of them um, uh, from the West Bank. Um, um, the situation is not one where a two-state solution is going to be uh, the future um, of the region. So first, the two-state mm-hmm. solution is a false hope. And um, I think that um, for a long time, the international community thought that it would be able to um, continue pursuing its own interests by ignoring that. I, I, my suspicion is that they all sort of start to know that the two-state solution talk is empty, and it was relatively comfortable to continue with this um, empty talk. But no, this was um, a form of ignoring reality, and we just saw what it looks like when you ignore reality. Reality at some point explodes in your face. And um, um, uh, once it does, then um, um, you need to come up with genuine political answers uh, that you avoided for years. And you have to deal with a situation that's become worse and worse because it was not dealt with. Um, So yes, um, look, there is not going to be a simple solution to uh, mm-hmm. the situation in Israel and Palestine. Um, people called my idea of, uh, it's not only my idea, um, there are many um, uh, ideas for bi-nationalism out there, but people have called this idea unrealistic. This is um, a completely false understanding of what it means to be realistic. The two-state solution is unrealistic because it ignores the facts, Um, Thinking in resignation is unrealistic because resignation is just that, not relating to reality. The assumption that we can keep on uh, uh, perpetrating apartheid to the majority of the population in the region and that um, uh, the situation would be contained is a misunderstanding of uh, politics, human nature uh, and political science. Those people, this majority will revolt, it will fire missiles, it will have suicide attacks and so forth. Mm-hmm. The question is, what are the realistic, political, democratic ways to deal with the situation? Da, da möchte ich, ähm, weißt, wenn, du, wenn ich jetzt was frage, was dich nicht interessiert, sagst du das. Aber für mich stellt sich die Frage, also wenn du schon diese Vision, ich sage nicht Utop- äh, Utopie, sondern nee. wenn du diese Vision hast, ist die überhaupt denkbar ohne ein Rückkehrrecht no. der Palästinenser, die vertrieben wurden oder geflohen sind, ge- gehört das als, grundlegende, als grundlegendes Recht zu dieser Vision dazu? Absolutely. Um, yes, please. No, ask. Sorry. Äh, ich wollte gerade nur sagen, also aus palästinensischer Sicht, ich bin selbst nicht Palästinenserin, aber aus palästinensischer ähm, Sicht und wenn man ähm, einfach an die Verdacht denkt, Beispielsweise, dann gehört ja das Rückkehrrecht auf jeden Fall dazu. Das sieht man aber auch in den anderen arabischen Staaten, die ja bis heute die palästinensischen Geflüchteten nicht ähm, eingebürgert haben, weil sie ja zum Beispiel auch darauf bestehen, dass sie zurückkehren sollen in das Land. Das heißt, also unabhängig jetzt davon, was Palästina und Israel sagen, auch die anderen arabischen Staaten drumherum pochen ja irgendwo auf ähm, dieses Rückkehrrecht. Und jetzt ist halt auch die Frage, was machen wir denn mit, äh, mit den, wie viele haben wir jetzt, sechs, sieben Millionen palästinensische Geflüchtete, die, da, die laut der UN als geflüchtet registriert sind? Ähm, ich bin mir nicht sicher, also auf jeden Fall mehr als fünf Millionen. Was machen wir dann mit denen? Also werden die dann da eingebürgert in diesem einen Staat? Also die, wenn wir jetzt sagen, wir machen jetzt ein Israel draus, kommt, dürfen die dann zurückgehen? Oder bleibt dieses Rückkehrrecht exklusiv für ähm, jüdische Menschen? Weil die dürfen ja einfach also nach Israel und sich einbürgern lassen. Palästinenser können das ja nicht machen. Wie sieht das dann damit aus? Um, um, you, um, I, I exaggerate a little bit when I say that you're preaching to the choir, but let me begin by uh, fully endorsing. Um, you're not quite preaching to the choir because I think that um, I want to um, have some reservation about some of the things that you said. But let me first say very clearly, in the bi-national state that um, I think we need to imagine, Um, there has to be um, uh, the right of return of the Palestinians. That's one reason why recognizing the history of the Nakba is so important. If we want to really understand the meaning of equal citizenship for Palestinians and for Jews in this territory, 
we have to do justice to the past and do justice to the past is not just by teaching our kids that this happened, not just by having mm -hmm. research institutions and uh, museums uh, for the history of the Palestinian population uh, before 48, even though I'm all for establishing those things, but also by a meaningful recognition of the right of return. The right of return exists. I am, as a Kantian universalist, I do not believe that Israel needs to recognize the right of return in order for there to be a right of return. I think that people who um, uh, were expelled from their homes have a right of on their homes one way or another. So that's one thing that um, I want to assert and demand that Israel recognize this right of return. That's one thing. Now the question is, how do we recognize this right of return? How do we have the political practices that actually um, uh, promote uh, the genuine, um, um, uh, yeah, the genuine um, assertion or expression of the right of return? One way to do this is to just um, uh, um, uh, grant uh, citizenship uh, status or the right to become citizens to all Palestinians who are uh, the sons and daughters and grandchildren of people who were expelled in '48, and in my view, that would be that would go too far and would not simply because it would not be sustainable. Um, um, but there are other uh, ways of recognizing it. For example, you can give citizen rights to some and have some measures by deciding to whom, but not to everybody. Um, um, and you can have um, um, many, maybe in the hundreds, thousands of people who will have the right of return. Maybe you can have a compensation or you can compensate those who um, uh, were expelled and uh, did not return. I think that there are methods of not just uh, uh, paying lip service to the right of return um, that do not include, uh, you know, uh, just the emergence of uh, five million Palestinians somewhere now uh, between uh, um, Haifa and uh, Tel Aviv, which obviously um, is just not going to happen. Um, but by all means, the right of return um, um, needs to be powerfully recognized. By the way, it is true that all Jews have the right to bec become um, um, uh, citizens of Israel. I do not uh, support that right um, uh, without question. I think that uh, um, the, the so-called the right of return of Jews uh, uh, to Israel, it has also something to do with the history of the Holocaust. This is why those histories are so important. We discussed this before. I think that it's important that uh, Palestinians recognize the sensitivity of Jews uh, to this right, given their history as a, a persecuted minority. By the way, as I also write in my book, um, I think that the Palestinian population in Israel um, actually does it uh, they, they do know to recognize it. They do understand it. I think we have to have more of that. Um, but it does not imply necessarily that every Jew um, um, who wants should uh, be able to become an Israeli citizen either. Um, one reason is that I don't think that Israel needs to be the state of the Jews in the, sta in the sense that if you're a Jew who does not live in Israel, then you live in the diaspora. I think that German Jews are German. I think that American Jews are American. And I think that it's extremely important to treat them as such. Their country, the, their country is um, um, the, the country uh, where they grew up. Um, they better belong to their uh, countries. The assumption that Jews as Jews do not really belong to the countries where they are, that mm -hmm. in turn entails the right, their right to become uh, uh, citizens of their country the assumption that this is their country and not France, Germany, the US, is uh, an awful one, indeed, by the way, an anti-Semitic assumption. And uh, for that reason, I do not necessarily support the right of return of yeah. all Jews to Israel either. Jetzt, jetzt mache ich einen Karlauer und sage, ähm, ich, ab, ich sage jetzt, es gibt auch das Recht weiterer Menschen, die gerne mit I warned you that you're speaking wollen. to a philosopher <laughs> and that's not... Um, ja, 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 ja. Die Philosophen haben die, naja, egal. Ähm, <lacht> Meist, ich danke dir sehr für deinen, äh, für deinen Anruf und deinen äh, Input. Dankeschön. Mach's gut. Tschüss. Danke euch. Viel Spaß noch. Danke. Danke. Ja, Spaß, genau. Is it fun? <lacht> we're not here to enjoy, I think. We're, we're here to do serious politics. Well.
Yeah, but I, I like, might enjoy it. Ja, aber ich finde, intelligente Unterhaltung ist auch immer Spaß. Also lass uns versuchen, Spaß zu haben. Ähm, wie viele Menschen kennst du eigentlich persönlich, die deine Auffassungen teilen? Und zwar sowohl, du hast ja nicht nur äh, Freunde unter den Israelis, sondern du bist auch connected, äh, vermute ich jedenfalls, in palästinensische äh, Communities. Nicht so gut? Not, not as much perhaps as you might think. I know some ja. people. Um, mm -hmm. I, I talk to some people, but... Um Not as much as you might think. In Israel, mm -hmm. the separation is uh, relatively um, effective. I've lived outside of Israel for some time. Um, I've met Palestinians also outside of Israel. I, I met some Palestinians in the Galilee where I grew up. But um, I do not have um, uh, many close contacts. I do have people that I talk to mm -hmm. um, um, among Palestinians. Um. Hast du manchmal selbst das Gefühl, du bist, jetzt werde ich biblisch, der einsame Rufer in der Wüste? Oder gibt es Menschen die, und Organisationen, die vielleicht auch zunehmend deine Auffassung teilen? I'm definitely not uh, the only or the first person who supports binationalism. Um, there have been plans for uh, a long time. There are uh, many other Israelis and other people who have thought about binationalism. Um, sometimes, sometimes, uh, the difference between me and them, even though I do not think that we necessarily disagree deeply, is that um, sometimes people have this uh, well-ordered table. By the way, I could explain this with Kant, but I will spare you, I will do the, fa the favor of not doing that. <laughs> There is a, um, 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 there used to be a, um, an allegedly well-ordered table. Mm -hmm. There were the two state. Uh, let's just put the right-wing Zionists aside because um, currently, they do not offer alternatives for peace. But uh, there were the liberal Zionists who supported the two-state solution, and there were the anti-Zionists who uh, supported the one-state solution. Um, if I have not a claim to fame, but if I have a claim to do something different from the people on the side of the uh, one-state supporters, then it is by insisting that um, this type of politics doesn't have to be understood as anti-Zionist. It can be seen as a politics that does justice to the genuine aspirations and motivations of Jews, which are legitimate, um, which are important. Jews have good reasons to insist on Jewish self-determination for security, uh, for um, uh, cultural reasons, und so weiter und so fort. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to break a little bit this passionately held agreement between Zionists and anti-Zionists, namely that Zionism is about um, Ju the Jewish aber, state. Aber da bist du jetzt mehr Dialektiker als Kantianer, nicht? Can be. <lacht> okay, wir haben wieder einen Anruf, einen Anrufer, eine Anruferin. Hallo, wer ist da? Ja, hallo, hier ist Ahmed. Ahmed. Hallo. Ja, yeah. Hi. Und zwar wollte ich ähm, über die deutsche Situation, vor allem die ähm, innerhalb der, der linken Parteien, der linken, ähm, auch gesellschaftlichen ähm, linken Gruppen in Deutschland äh, sehen, wie, wie da das wahrgenommen wird, der, der Konflikt und vielleicht auch so ein bisschen meine äh, eigene Wahrnehmung. Und äh, also ich fand das, ich fand das interessant, diese äh, Gleichzeitigkeit, die meine Vorrednerin angesprochen hat zwischen Holocaust und Nakba. Also ich fühle das auch. Also habe das Gefühl dadurch, dass ich äh, einen palästinensisch-israelischen Vater habe und eine deutsche Mutter, dass ich, dass es beides für mich existiert. Das eine aus der Perspektive der der Täterrolle und mich mich damit beschäftigt hat und das andere aus der äh, eher aus der Opferrolle. Und für mich das quasi absolut kein Widerspruch ist. Ähm, jetzt merke ich aber, dass es immer mehr so ist, äh, auch zum Beispiel in, in der Partei, in der Linken, ähm, wo, ich, wo ich Mitglied bin, dass, äh, dass das ähm, teilweise so dargestellt wird. Also wenn ich mich einsetzen möchte für die Rechte von PalästinenserInnen, dann ähm, mache ich, also dann tue ich sozusagen ähm, dem, also ist es nicht gut äh, für das ähm, Gedenken an den Holocaust oder ich begebe mich schon äh, in, in Richtung Antisemitismus, 
Ähm, und das wird immer radikaler, habe ich das Gefühl. Und das ist für mich ein, ein enormes Problem. Ja, also ich weiß nicht, ob, ob, wie du das empfindest in der, äh, in der deutschen Diskussion um sie. Look, um, I completely can I understand uh, the question. The burden of the past is, uh, is major. And uh, um, history really is tragic because it just so happens that uh, uh, quite a few Holocaust survivors um, also participated in um, um, perpetrating this crime against the Palestinians. And uh, it's extremely complex to uh, then relate, not just, you know, um, we're, it's almost too easy um, if we look at it from the perspective of uh, just the Jewish state or the state of Israel. That's, um, uh, that can be looked at as also a state that uh, perpetrates crimes like the Nakba, like occupation, mm. like apartheid, it becomes even more difficult when we speak about maybe even specific people who uh, were Holocaust survivors and then uh, fought in Palestine and uh, 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 possibly participated in expelling people from their homes externally violently. You know, people do not leave their homes uh, People sometimes like to speak about in Israel about um, peaceful transfer or voluntary transfer of the Palestinians. That's, of course, uh, uh, washed words. Usually those uh, 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 villages were not uh, um, um, yeah, evacuated by peaceful means. Um, those Holocaust survivors were um, uh, also fighting for their lives and definitely, again, had good reasons to think that this is what they were doing. Um, there is interesting literature in Israel about... Um, this uh, mixing of um, Holocaust consciousness and Nakba consciousness of um, people who fight in uh, uh, the war of independence and sometimes think of the Palestinians as Nazis, sometimes mm -hmm. think of themselves as Nazis because they realize that they perpetrate um, uh, crimes. Um, it's an interesting fact about Israeli literature that those voices were um, existed. They existed um, in the beginning um, of the state, in the early stages of the state. Uh, Sameh Izar is an important um, um, writer, one of Israel's um, most important writers of the past, who, uh, who've been, who's been doing this, uh, or who did this mixing of consciousness in his writings. But they did not exist in the second generation of authors. They did not exist uh, in Amos Oz. They did not exist um, in David Grossman. For them already, Zionism was much more simple much less um, complex. Now you're asking me about the German situation. I'm no expert of the German situation, but I, um, you know, I've, I've been around for some time and I understand the complexities and I've, um, I've spoken uh, to people here about those issues a lot. The Nakba poses a challenge, um, but if um, Germany will not be able or Germans will not be able to relate to the Nakba, then they will not be able to understand the Palestinians. The tendency I feel, Ahmed, and I, um, you may know it um, uh, from your own personal experiences, um, um, not to say identity. Um, my fear is that um, Germans today prefer to uh, portray the Palestinians as proto-Nazis mm. in order to avoid confronting the problem of the Nakba. Why? Because if the Palestinians are Nazis, you know, you can, um, instead of understanding that um, 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 a Jewish state could not come to be without creating a Jewish majority, um, and that that was a major reason why this population was expelled. Das bedeutet, wenn ich da einhaken darf, um, ein Mechanismus, der eigentlich ein, ein psychosozialer ist, wenn ich einen anderen als Nazi bezeichne, dann exkludiere ich ihm oder dann spreche ich ihm Menschlichkeit that's ab. Right. That's exactly the point. Dann muss ich mich erstens nicht mit dem auseinandersetzen, was seine Position ist, weil Nazi ist grundsätzlich falsch. Und zum Zweiten legitimiere ich mein Handeln gegenüber diesem Nazi, weil alles, was Nazi bekämpft, ist gut. Ist das der Mechanismus? I think that's in, very much the mechanism. I think that's exactly right. I think that that's very much the mechanism. Ist das, wenn ich, wenn ich da fragen darf, schon, äh, Ahmed, ist das eine Erfahrung, die du selbst ähm, auch gemacht hast mit dem 
ähm, Hintergrund, dem eigenen biografischen Hintergrund, den du beschrieben hast? Ähm, ja, also ich würde jetzt nicht, weiß ich nicht, ob Nazi, ähm, ob das vielleicht zu hart ist, aber klar, also es, es geht äh, darum, dass einem Antisemitismus vorgeworfen wird, ähm, dass eben, also ich habe das Gefühl, Antisemitismus und Antizionismus wird sowieso als das Gleiche äh, behandelt. Und auch das, ähm, das jetzt zum Beispiel, wenn man über Kritik an, an Menschen, also wenn man Kritik an Menschenrechtsverletzungen in, in Israel anspricht, dass das auch schon quasi auslöst bei, bei manchen gegenüber, äh, dass man doch da, ähm, dass man Antisemitismus bedient. Ähm, und ja, natürlich und, 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 äh, Palästinenser habe ich schon oft auch das Gefühl, wird mit, Nazi, mit Nazis teilweise gleichgesetzt. Aber ich habe auch das Gefühl, dass es immer mehr, also dass es von Antideutschen eben vor allem ähm, nicht nur gegen äh, PalästinenserInnen geht oder auch vielleicht gegen linke Biodeutsche, sondern immer mehr auch gegen ähm, jüdische Israelis oder ähm, amerikanische äh, JüdInnen wie jetzt, äh, Judith Butler oder ähm, Naomi Klein, das war jetzt auch äh, vor kurzem, ähm, oder äh, es gab in, in Berlin Weißensee an der äh, in der Hochschule Weißensee diese Veranstaltung Unlearning Zionism, wo ähm, Studierende sich mit der mit ihrer Identität beschäftigt haben aus einer kritischen Haltung und dann von von Deutschen quasi den Vorwurf bekommen haben, sie sind antisemitisch. Also meinst auch, du, ich äh, auch, Ahmed, mein, meinst du ja. jetzt, weil du zweimal gesagt hast, Antideutsche, meinst du damit explizit diese Strömung innerhalb deiner eigenen Partei, der Linkspartei, meinst du die damit? Ja, ich würde auch das nicht mhm. nur auf die Linkspartei be, ähm, beschränken, also ich würde auch zum Beispiel ähm, Volker Beck ähm, oder auch äh, Cem Özdemir also Cem Özdemir mhm. hat vor ein paar Tagen ähm, Golda Meyer ähm, zitiert mit äh, ähm, Sie werden erst Frieden haben, wenn Sie uns weniger hassen als Ihre Kinder. Ja. Diesen, äh, also finde ich äh, äh, einen schrecklichen Satz irgendwie. Und auch wenn man weiß, was vielleicht dahinter steckt an, an Ideologie. Also äh, es, äh, es wird eigentlich diese die Haltung von, von Netanyahu und ähm, von den rechten Kräften in Israel werden von der Linken teilweise eins zu eins äh, übernommen, was ich schon sehr schockierend finde. Weil sich ja eigentlich, links heißt ja eigentlich, sich auf die Seite der Unterdrückten äh, zu stellen. Egal, ob sie jüdisch sind oder muslimisch oder christlich oder welche Hautfarbe oder welche Sexualität sie haben. Und das passiert in dem Fall für mich einfach nicht. Es ist keine neutrale äh, Haltung. Yeah, I think that uh, I'm afraid that uh, the tendencies exist. Look, um, um, here is one thing that I've seen uh, happening, um, um, say in the recent uh, escalation that we that we've witnessed. Um, um, there were also riots inside Israel. Uh, there were lynches of uh, um, Arabs of Jews and uh, of Jews of Arabs. Um, I've seen uh, a German newspaper. Um, um, uh, publishing the idea that uh, what the um, what in order to understand the situation you need to understand that Arabs want to have uh, um, uh, Jerusalem Rhein uh, um, um, to have uh, Jerusalem free of Jews. You know the immediate yeah. the immediate uh, um, 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 association. Das Judenfreie uh, Jerusalem. Uh, or that or mm. that what was happening in Israel was Kristallnacht. Mm -hmm. This is published in, um, let's say, serious German newspapers. Now, um, um, look, um, here's Kristallnacht. My grandparents were actually in Germany when Kristallnacht happened. Um, um, Kristallnacht was uh, an event that was perpetrated by the ethnic majority against the minority um, um, and supported by the government. Israel is a Jewish state. The Jews inside Israel are not the, the ethnic uh, uh, minority. There is uh, a, a police force that by all means is there to defend Jews, let me say it like that, not less than the Arabs. Um, 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 unfortunately, we've seen videos also today um, of horrifying police violence against the Arabs as part of uh, what was happening. Um, 
the um, the tendency to uh, to present those events as events that um, um, are somehow akin to German anti-Semitism against Jews is first sinister, second um, um, it um, it does terrible injustice to the absolutely important history and memory of the Holocaust. And most importantly, or sorry, not most importantly, but extremely importantly um, uh, to your question. It is a tendency to avoid um, understanding um, the crime of the Nakba because um, um, exactly as you said, by presenting the Palestinians as proto-Nazis, you know, tell me again about the Mufti of Jerusalem, who was uh, a, a Hitler sympathizer. That needs to be stated. By the way, there were even Jewish um, um, uh, Hitler sympathizers, people who sympathized with Hitler uh, for ideological reasons. Um, 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 that needs to be stated clearly. The, um, uh, the horrifying record of the Mufti needs to be mentioned. But the Palestinian society cannot at all be reduced to um, um, uh, this anti-Semitism. There is another development here that's important and that you sort of mentioned, Ahmed, in what you said, and I think needs to be um, uh, briefly discussed. Um, it's very difficult for a Palestinian person to be Zionist. Um, Zionism has been um, um, obviously, if not uh, by conceptual necessity, then by historical fact, um, uh, associated with the crushing of the rights and the lives of Palestinians. The state of Israel um, could not have come to be um, with a Palestinian, with a large overriding Palestinian majority um, uh, inside of Palestine. Um, that's just one example of the reason why Palestinians cannot be Zionists. The equation of um, anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism, therefore, immediately delegitimizes Palestinians as such. Because already to be a Palestinian um, uh, makes you a threat to the Jews, right? Um, for that reason, um, those tendencies have to be criticized. They have to be criticized in the name of the memory of the Holocaust, in the name of taking it, um, the Holocaust seriously. You want to take the Holocaust seriously, you want to understand um, the meaning and the danger of nationalism you also have to do justice to the um, history of the Nakba. Um, there is a causal relation between them. Um, the two are not the same. The two uh, cannot be compared to one another. They should not be compared to one another. But the relation should be understood. And the tendency to claim that no Nakba existed, or that if it did exist, then it was not a crime because it was no negotiable self-defense of people who can only be thought of as victims. That tendency needs to be um, overcome also in order to enable a better understanding of the past but look around um, us see what's happening now in the region um, in order to understand the current situations on the ground and the future hmm. ahmed yeah danke schön yeah und thank you ahmed ich ähm, ich hoffe dass du, also ich nehme dich als jemanden wahr der sozusagen in dieser Diskussion äh, versucht, die Komplexität auch der eigenen wie der anderen im Verständnis äh, zu vermitteln. Wenn ich mich ja. da nicht irre in dir, das finde ich einen tollen Ansatz. Let me tell you a story. Do we have time to a story? No. Um, yeah. no uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I remember one evening. I remember one evening at a bar in Munich. Um, um, uh, standing with some friends in Munich and uh, um, uh, a German uh, looking, let's say, guy, um, whatever that may mean, <laughs> um, uh, uh, came into the bar and uh, started speaking to... Uh, is Ahmed still online? Am I yes, yes. To him? Yeah. Uh, um, came into the bar and uh, we started speaking and at some point, I did not know him before, um, I didn't speak to him after, and at some point um, um, someone said, you know, that he's actually half Uh, Palestinian, half German, half uh, Palestinian. Uh, um, his, um, you know, grandparents somehow escaped Palestine uh, in um, in '48, and uh, um, uh, also made it to Germany. And he's half half. And I started talking to him, and I asked him, you know, have you been to Israel? Have you seen? Uh, have you seen it? Um, and so forth. And he mentioned that he came to Israel, and he said, um, 
Um, he went to Tel Aviv and he loved Tel Aviv, but uh, when he went to uh, Jaffa, to Jaffa, uh, where his family was from, he said he could not enjoy uh, Jaffa any longer. He said, you know, um, I know that you cannot understand this. This is something that um, uh, you need to have this uh, personal experience in order to understand this. Um, the meaning of going to a city that used to be your family's city, their homes, um, um, a land that used to be your, um, the land of uh, uh, your family. And to be there, you know, Jer um, Tel Aviv is a fun city, but I just could not enjoy it. I had to leave. I know that it's difficult for you to understand, but um, um, because you do not have that experience. But um, 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 try to understand me. You know what's mm. shocking about this, right? Because yeah. we were having this discussion in Munich, and he's talking to a uh, Berm, right? Um, um, <laughs> I, um, I don't know how many people in this room have uh, 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 grandparents or uh, parents who came from Berlin, but I do. Um, uh, so I know well what it means to uh, come to a place that actually, um, you know, your family has a history in it, and it's a, it's a heavy history and, and meaningful history. Um, yeah. But I think that, we, the, that the fact that I'm here, um, uh, some people will uh, present me as a traitor, as someone who is uh, collaborating with uh, 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 the Nazis of the past and the Nazis of the present and the future. I think that most sane people know that this is absolutely not true. Um, um, the fact that I'm here, the fact that so many Israelis are here, uh, if that phenomenon is not um, uh, looked upon lightly, it shows you that there are ways of taking seriously the past, but also moving forward from it. And I think that Palestinians can come uh, to Israel, or at least, sorry, I think that um, there ought to be ways, there ought to be a type of politics that would make it possible for Palestinians also to put the Nakba also in the past, to remember it, to do justice to it. But then also, as I write in my book, in some ways to forget it, not to forget that it happened, but to move forward from it. Me sitting here uh, uh, with Germans uh, here is not just simply forgetting the Holocaust, but there is a certain meaning of forgetting it. We remember it, and remembering it, we move away from it. But we can only do this if we remember. I think that the same needs to be done with the Nakba. We have to do justice to this history in a meaningful way so that Palestinians can move also forward from it. A cool story. Ahmed, um, hast du Irgendeine Parallele in deiner Biografie, ähm, ich, wenn ich fragen darf, ähm, du bist aufgewachsen in Deutschland, ja, richtig? Ich bin aufgewachsen in Deutschland, ja. ja. Ähm, hast du die Region im weiteren Sinne äh, besucht? Warst du dort oder hast du das vor? Wenn nein, ja, warum ich, nicht? Ja, ja, doch. Also meine Familie wohnt auch noch ähm, in, in, in Israel, also mhm. in einem arabischen Dorf, Kalanzauer heißt das, in, in der Nähe von äh, Netanya. I just came Und, from there, basically. Yeah. <lacht> Sorry. Ja? Ja? Ja. Ähm, das heißt, ich, ich, ich war da ähm, alle zwei Jahre im Sommer mit meiner Familie, also mit meinen Eltern. Mhm. Ähm, bis auf 2000 bis 2005. Ähm, das war zu unsicher. Also ich habe das erst dann im Nachhinein so viele Sachen verstanden, wieso wir dann da nicht hin konnten. Ähm, aber ja, also ich... Ich war ähm, da, ich war äh, auch in der Westbank. Meine, meine Schwester hat ähm, da ähm, für eine christliche Organisation Friedensdienst geleistet. Ich war in den Checkpoints, habe da die Situation gesehen, was eine komplett andere auch ist als die der palästinensischen äh, Israelis innerhalb von Israel. Ähm, ich war noch nie im Gazastreifen, aber ja, also ich habe ähm, hab ein paar Sachen gesehen, genau. Dankeschön, Ahmed. Thanks, Ahmed. Danke euch. Vielen um, es, ich, ich möchte da, bevor die nächste Anruferin dann vermutlich kommt, äh, etwas ansprechen. Eine Mail, die uns äh, erreicht hat von einer Kollegin, einer Journalistin. Sie sagt, sie hat einen syrischen Background. Und ähm, sie sagt, sie erfährt, und das knüpft ein bisschen an an das, was, was Ahmed sagt, dass es im Moment in der deutschen Bevölkerung und auch bei deutschen Politikern sozusagen eine Spaltung äh, gibt im Moment, auch unter dem Eindruck der äh, 
der letzten zwei Wochen, dass ähm, man, dass, dass sich Deutsche, und sie sagt, sie kann das nicht verstehen, dass sich Deutsche nicht für Gruppen, wie in dem Fall Palästinenser, die wesentlich zu den Opfern auch der jüngsten äh, Auseinandersetzung gehören, dass keine Solidarität mit denen da ist, sondern wenn man dann, wie sie, als jemand mit einem äh, solchen Hintergrund darauf hinweist, dann wird man selbst marginalisiert und ausgegrenzt. Ist das deine eigene Beobachtung? Du lebst jetzt seit knapp einem Jahr in Berlin. Hast du so etwas auch beobachtet? Look, I do not have the experience as a, um, I cannot make experiences as a Palestinian. Mm -hmm. um, um, I would, uh, let's say that from the dynamics um, that I was uh, uh, trying to sketch earlier on uh, when talking to Ahmed about the fact that in some way, um, uh, um, um, since you cannot be a Zionist as a Palestinian, mm -hmm. um, then your mere, your mere existence already poses a problem um, um, that problematizes. Um, uh, the being of a Palestinian. By the way, there is another uh, footnote to this. Uh, one way for uh, in Germany to deal with this is to uh, deny the existence of a Palestinian people. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, instead of you do not deny the existence of individuals, um, but uh, uh, they pose a problem as individuals, not as a people with. Is that immer noch? Is that immer noch? I so? think that obviously mm -hmm. uh, uh, is one trend um, um, that exists. Um, I would say that I make. I've made similar um, uh, um, experiences, not as a Palestinian, but which I'm not, but as a Jew, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because my existence here as a Jew who criticizes Israel is extremely uncomfortable um, uh, to... Um, for uh, Deutsch? Uh, for many Germans. Um, mm. uh, you, know, um, you know, Volker Beck was mentioned. I mean, uh, um, um, you know... Um, I don't want to waste uh, too much time about those uh, uh, those stories, but um, let's say let's say that uh, uh, for a German for a German uh, politician to present uh, a Jewish Israeli um, who uh, may not share um, that politician's views to present me say as uh, um, the apostle and that's a quote the apostle of anti-Semitism in Germany. Der Apostel des Antisemitismus? Apostel is a quote. Yeah, yeah. The Apostel of an yeah. anti-Semitic yeah. um, um, mm -hmm. um, conspiracy that goes back to the Middle Ages. Um, <laughs> um, at some point you have to understand, at some point you have, I think, to see that this um, hate-infused, conspiracy-laden um, philosemitism um, 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 seems to this Jew, um, um, like um, a certain type of, um, I don't want to say anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. um, but um, extremely worrisome. Um, I have not been marginalized in Germany personally. I'm not marginalized by my friends, but I think that um, the tendency to love Jews, if they love Israel, and to hate them, there's no other word for that, to hate them, um, if they do not, by the way, I love Israel, it's my country, it's my home, but if they criticize Israel in a way that's uncomfortable for you, then to hate them. There's no other word for calling you the apostle yeah. um, of an anti-Semitic uh, conspiracy um, um, is part of this. Turned not against Palestinians, but against um, um, Jews. I think that all Jews who have learned something from history need to look at, for example, people like that and fear that they do not express. So I know that anti-Semitism exists. It exists um, among the left. It exists in more dangerous ways among the right. And it exists maybe in the most perverse way among philosemites, at least some of them. Psychologen würden dann vielleicht von einer Übersprungshandlung sprechen. Kommt mir gerade in den Sinn, who knows. Um, wir haben, nee, äh, sofort, äh, die, die Frage jetzt ist, äh, wie viel Zeit hast du eigentlich mitgebracht? Wir hatten ja mal gesagt, zwei Stunden. Es gibt so viele Anrufer äh, und, und Interesse und die Zahlen sind gut. Wenn du, es, wenn du Zeit hast und schaffst, können wir auch drei Stunden machen. Sehr gerne. Angebot. Wir machen das, ja. 
Okay, also wir machen so lange, wie wir es aushalten und <lacht> ihr wollt. Sehr schön. We Was? Kaffee? Ja, danke. Okay, ich auch. <lacht> bitte. Ähm, ähm, ja, bitte. <lacht> ich nehme mit Milch. Vielen Dank. Aber dann müssen wir, wir auch Spaß äh, machen. Also ja, nur, aber ganz seriös bleiben. Äh, nee, du, du bestimmst, wie du dich artikulierst und so. Ne? <lacht> das ist ähm, up to you. Wer ist jetzt am Telefon? Hallo. Hallo, hier ist Nesrin. Nesrin? Ähm, Nesrin. Genau, genau. Ja, genau. Ich, äh, ich, ich finde es total cool. Ich wollte mich erstmal bedanken, dass ich äh, dabei sein darf, beziehungsweise dass ich ähm, die Möglichkeit habe, auch meine Sicht auf die Dinge mit euch zu teilen. Und ich möchte mich als allererstes für, die, für diese Plattform bedanken, dafür, dass auch in der deutschsprachigen Medienlandschaft eine Plattform angeboten wird, wo palästinensische Stimmen, beziehungsweise halt, ähm, ja, vielfältige Stimmen gehört werden. Das ist ja nicht so oft und dafür möchte ich mich an dieser Stelle erstmal bedanken. Und ähm, direkt auch ähm, anfangen mit ähm, meiner Sicht auf die aktuelle Situation, ähm, die wir ja alle miterleben, die aktuelle Vertreibung der Palästinenserinnen ähm, und Palästinenser aus Ost-Jerusalem. Ähm, also 1980, im August 1980, wurde die UN-Resolution 478 verabschiedet und in dieser Resolution wurde das Jerusalem-Gesetz, ähm, was im selben Jahr im Juli äh, verabschiedet wurde im israelischen Palästin äh, äh, Parlament, nichtig gemacht. Ähm, trotz dieser Nichtigkeit, also trotz, dass diese Resolution dieses Gesetz nichtig gemacht hat, ähm, was ja besagt, dass, ähm, dass die israelische Besatzung in Ostjerusalem die Möglichkeit haben kann, Siedlungen zu erbauen, trotz dieser Resolution sind aktuell 7850 PalästinenserInnen davon bedroht, in Ostjerusalem aus ihren Häusern vertrieben zu werden. Ähm, außerdem erleben wir halt auch, wie zum Beispiel im Westjordanland eine Trennmauer erbaut wurde. Wir erleben den Gazastreifen, der über, seit über 14 Jahren ähm, blockiert wird, wo ich glaube zwei Millionen Menschen ähm, ja, im, in, wie in einem Gefängnis ähm, zusammengelebt, äh, zusammenleben. Und ähm, ja, seit über 50 Jahren besetzt Israel palästinensische Gebiete. Und mir fehlt auch in der deutschsprachigen Medienlandschaft so ein bisschen eine faire Berichterstattung in Bezug auf den palästinensischen Widerstand. Ähm, Fakt ist, dass äh, dort eine andauernde Gewalt herrscht ähm, seitens der israelischen Sicherheitsbehörden und dass immer wieder und immer noch palästinensische Viertel besiedelt werden. Es gibt die Armee-Checkpoints, die ein vernünftiges Leben einfach nicht möglich machen. Und ähm, ich bin ein großer Fan davon, dass wir diese, ähm, diesen, diesen Konflikt in Anführungsstrichen, dass wir diese Diskussion nicht ähm, anhand von Zahlen nur führen, sondern halt auch wirklich Namen. Ich möchte an dieser Stelle die Familie El Kurt aus dem Viertel Sheikh Jarrah erwähnen, die seit ich weiß nicht wie vielen Jahren sich ihre Wohnung mit einem Siedler teilt. Ich kann mir halt einfach nicht vorstellen, dass das in irgendeiner Weise mit, ähm, mit, mit der Würde des Menschen vereinbar ist oder mit den Bedürfnissen des Menschen vereinbar ist. Ähm, alt, und, und er sagt ja selber, äh, dieser Siedler sagt selber, wenn ich nicht hierher komme, dann kommt jemand anders. Und deswegen bleibe ich hier, obwohl er die Möglichkeit hat, in Brooklyn, glaube ich, oder in den Vereinigten Staaten auf jeden Fall, ein normales Leben zu führen. Ähm, genau Und all dies geschieht, ohne dass... Ähm, Israel oder die israelische Regierung sanktioniert wird, wie andere Staaten. Wenn andere Staaten das machen, dann werden sie dafür sanktioniert und natürlich zu Recht. Ähm, meine Frage ist jetzt hier, wenn wir von einer Einstaatenlösung sprechen, wie kann diese Einstaatenlösung gewährleisten, dass, ähm, dass die PalästinenserInnen nicht mehr auf dieser Ebene, äh, dass ihnen nicht mehr auf dieser Ebene begegnet wird, dass ihre Rechte gewährleistet werden, dass sie nicht mehr als Bürger zweiter Klasse ähm, ja, behandelt werden. Und äh, wie kann eine Einstaatenlösung gewährleisten, dass wenn, ähm, wenn die israelische Politik, wenn die israelischen Sicherheitsbehörden diese Kriegsverbrechen, diese Menschenrechtsverletzungen tätigt, dass da halt wirklich auch sanktioniert wird? Uh, thanks, Nasrin. I want to uh, agree with some things that you said, and I want to disagree with some others. Maybe, um, uh, um, uh, um, maybe it's natural that we have slightly different um, perspectives, even though uh, we do not completely agree about everything. We actually uh, agree mm. about much, I think. Um, so first, um, I think that you said at some point uh, you spoke about the actual 
Vertreibung of the Palestinians. I think that um, um, I think that um, we cannot say that um, there is no actual Vertreibung. I think that methods of expelling the Palestinians right now um, also exist. Um, uh, they exist um, uh, in all sorts of ways. For example, uh, by uh, trying to dry up their wells uh, in the West Bank, by uh, sometimes even poisoning the wells, and so forth and so forth. So people cannot live in some territories, and they have to um, uh, they have to live. Um, however, um, um, a crime like the Nakba, which in some ways is ongoing. The, um, um, a, um, a crime like that is not currently taking place. Um, um, my position on Sheikh Jarrah is uh, uh, pretty obvious. I'm uh, uh, probably not going to be far from your opinion. But I do not think that just calling it for Treibung um, is uh, also uh, the adequate uh, way to put it. I think that um, an extremely unjust um, um, eviction of Palestinians um, um, from their uh, uh, from their homes uh, is taking place. It's not yet um, what I fear might actually happen. Um, um, uh, a method of actually systematic expulsions of Palestinians. I think that that we're not seeing right now. I think that extremists are speaking this language. I think that unfortunately um, we're seeing the rehabilitation of such methods uh, at the heart of Israeli politics. I've written about this uh, also in the German media. But um, uh, for me, um, the way you presented it for a moment um, um, uh, went um, uh, one bridge too far. That was uh, uh, at least my feeling um, when you spoke. If we, uh, we could have explained Sheikh Jarrah, I, I don't doubt that uh, you understand um, or that you know the background there. Um, um, but um, let us not discuss it. To your question, um, how do uh, I suggest ensuring that uh, Palestinians will not be second-class citizens um, in the one-state solution. Look, I do not um, uh, know how to ensure uh, things politically. That's not uh, um, uh, what I'm uh, paid for, let's say. Um, mm -hmm. In the state that I envision, um, that's not supposed to be the case because it's supposed to be a state that's binational. Um, 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 the idea for the Haifa Republic is the idea, yes, for a binational state. It's not the idea to give citizenship, Israeli citizenship, um, a citizenship in the Jewish state to Palestinians. Um, rather, it is a way um, to form a federation. The suggestion is to form a federation where citizens would be citizens of the federation and they would have full rights on the full territory and they will be able to secure their um, national self-determination in their own, if you want to call it that, cantons or autonomies. Um, um, a constitution is supposed uh, to ensure that, A, all individuals have the same rights on the uh, uh, full territory, and B, that the national rights of each of the groups are respected. A constitutional court, uh, for example, uh, should or could uh, be established in order to ensure that. My view, and I argue for this very uh, explicitly, um, frankly, I don't think that this uh, is even um, controversial if you look at the laws in Israel, is that currently um, Palestinians who are citizens of Israel are second-class citizens. They're not equal. And um, 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 this is why I do not think that um, uh, Israel should be a Jewish state. I do not think that the Haifa Republic should be a Jewish republic. It should be a binational um, republic. And as I mentioned uh, um, uh, some time ago in this uh, uh, show, um, part of this is recognizing genuinely the right of return, mm -hmm. also of Palestinians. Um, that has everything to do with your question on uh, Sheikh Jarrah. Uh, I don't know if we want to discuss more the history and the current situation in Sheikh Jarrah, which I think um, is extremely interesting for that, why this is happening right now. Let's, let's make it up to Nesrin. Um, also, wohin die Diskussion jetzt gehen soll. Ich halte mich jetzt ein bisschen zurück, weil ich finde, das ist ein ganz uh, spannendes Gespräch zwischen euch beiden. Yeah. 
Ja, also ich, ich finde es total spannend, ähm, auch, auch den Fakt hat, dass wir von ost also wenn wir von Sheikh Jarrah sprechen, dann halt auch von ost sprechen und äh, von klar festgelegten ähm, UN-Resolutionen. Ähm, aber ich, also wenn das jetzt ähm, in die Länge, wenn das jetzt die ganze Diskussion in die Länge ziehen würde, dann können wir auch die, ähm, auf die Diskussion der Einstaatenlösung bzw. auf diese Vision eingehen. Und ähm, dann würde ich halt auch die Frage stellen, wie, ähm, wie man das realisieren könnte, dass, also ich meine, jetzt ist es ja so, dass wir jetzt ähm, in Israel PalästinenserInnen auch haben, beziehungsweise ähm, arabische Israelis, die dort leben. 20 Prozent, glaube ich, etwa. Ja, ja ich, ich weiß gar nicht genau, wie viel. Ja, ja. Genau. Und, ähm, und, 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 und die erfahren halt Rassismus und, äh, und die leben halt dort nicht, ähm, nicht, nicht gleich, äh, gleichwürdig und gleichberechtigt behandelt wie, ähm, wie jüdische Israelis. Und ähm, meine Frage ist, wie soll das in Zukunft, um, also wie, wie, wie kann man das in Zukunft umgehen? Wie kann man sagen, also wir haben jetzt den Fall von, in Israel leben ja äh, Araber und, äh, oder arabische Israelis und jüdische Israelis zusammen. Wie kann man umgehen, dass die aktuelle Ungerechtigkeit in, einem ein, in einer Einstaatenlösung oder in einem Einstaat nicht mehr vorhanden ist? Nasrin, I, um, so again, um I do not necessarily disagree with you, but I have, um, um, I see things, I think, um, with different points of emphasis. I'll, um, I'll, okay. I'll give you one example. Um, mm -hmm. You speak about the racism against um, um, uh, Palestinian Israelis and, um, 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 yeah, that they're not equal citizens. And I, in many ways, um, am uh, the first to point that out, you know, uh, to try mm -hmm. to show that Uh, not just in practice, because, uh, you know, Germany, for example, has obviously its own problem with uh, minorities. And it's, um, I wouldn't say that, um, 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 let's say, Turkish citizens here um, 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 have the same, you know, are treated um, uh, decently in the same way as um, um, uh, Germans uh, with no uh, Immigrationshintergrund are treated uh, um, uh, uh, by the police, say. Um, mm -hmm. But there is a difference, and uh, we probably agree about that. The difference has to do with the question of um, the significance of citizenship. In Israel, in the, uh, the Jewish state, um, non-Jews cannot be equal citizens on that level. Um, in Germany, in principle, in principle, even if in practice uh, mm -hmm. this does not always happen, Also, um, um, uh, people who are immigrants, let's say me, I'm German, I'm a German citizen, and I'm, uh, I'm German. And a Turkish person can be German in the uh, relevant sense. Mm -hmm. But there is a flip side to this, Nasrin, and I want you um, um, uh, for a second to alert you to it. The flip side is, I think, that the reality for a lot of Arab Israelis or uh, Palestinian Israelis, um, mm -hmm. let's put for a moment now uh, the events of the last 10 days aside even though we need to talk about them because they show a lot and they're important. I think that on a, a daily basis, um, the situation of Palestinian Israelis is often, they are discriminated against in the Jewish state. There is no question about this. I cannot emphasize this enough, but there is a but. The but is, um, um, and it does not mean that everything that came before the but uh, is irrelevant. Um, The but is that there have been tremendous achievements also in Israel in the direction of uh, democracy. And in a way, precisely because Israel is a Jewish state and precisely because there have been um, a bloody um, um, uh, conflict between Jews and Palestinians, some of the genuine democratic achievements on the political level and on the social level are also um, important uh, to notice. This is not in order to diminish um, the injustices and the violence. Um, again, I'm usually the first to point them out. But I do not think that we should um, um, also forget the achievements. That's one thing um, that needs to be mentioned. And it needs to be mentioned in order to, um, uh, to speak about the possibility of a future. It seems to me that um, um, some of the practices, some of the um, uh, regular life situations in Israel actually demonstrate the ability of Jews and Palestinians 
uh, to live together. This is part of the reason why I call this a Haifa Republic. Haifa, I do not think, is a utopia. I do not think that Haifa as a city in a Jewish state is a uh, um, is a city that can have actually just equal relations between Palestinian citizens and um, uh, Jewish citizens. However, it shows how far we can go. Um, it shows a certain model of living together that's possible, that goes a long way uh, uh, towards actual, um, um, actual equality. Let me say another word about this. Look, some of the most powerful I don't know if powerful. Some of the most important, intelligent, and very powerful up to a point, politicians in Israel's parliament are Palestinian Israelis. I look mm -hmm. at 120 uh, parliament members of the Israeli parliament, and besides the fact that I um, vote to the joint list, um, I don't think this is a secret or it needs to be a secret, Besides the, the fact that uh, those are the people who are the nearest uh, uh, to my political views, yeah. I think that um, nobody can uh, debate, nobody can uh, question the fact that they are the best. They are uh, well-educated, they really speak for democracy, not, um, um, uh, they do not just do the opposite, you know, they're not just the, uh, the right-wing Zionists uh, uh, doing the Arab thing or the Palestinian thing. Um, they are impressive leaders. And the fact that um, they can do that inside Israel, the fact that um, they can so seriously represent both their own population, Palestinians, and people like me, people like uh, my father, um, um, who votes for them. My father, as I, uh, um, you know, he's uh, uh, not so young anymore. He's the son of Holocaust survivors. He's a... Uh, um, an officer in the Israeli military in, uh, uh, reserve. He's, uh, he's seen some wars in his life. And um, uh, he's um, uh, been a liberal Zionist uh, uh, all his life. And he's uh, uh, voted more than once now to, this, um, to the joint list to the Arab party. I think that the forms of um, um, political cohabitation um, can be at least, uh, we can, they, we have a glimpse of them. And if we decide to, um, to hold on to them and to um, let them give us hope, then I think this is what we can, um, uh, then I think we can actually uh, promote actual, such actual politics. Going back to that thing that slightly disturbed me when you spoke, despite all the inequality, despite all the injustice, despite all of the violence against Palestinians also inside of Israel. Palestinians also have power and Palestinians also have success and Palestinians also enjoy rights in Israel. And I think they enjoy life in Israel, uh, some of them at least. Um, I just come uh, back from Israel. I just came back yesterday. I, I spent, um, among uh, other things, a lot of time also in the Galilee where I grew up. And um, I see the changes, you know, I went, uh, I went with my wife um, uh, to buy books. We went to the bookshop. It was clear that the, um, uh, the, sell, uh, the sellers were young Arab uh, women. We were listening to the same music. Um, um, you could call it a colonialist situation um, uh, um, because we were speaking Hebrew and that wouldn't be completely false. On the other hand, you could also see um, a genuine friendship, genuine interest uh, in each other. Um, and uh, let me tell you another thing. As all the events were happening, as uh, people were having all this violence on the street, also in the Galilee, we returned mm -hmm. to the same shops, basically, um, um, and um, things were exactly the same between us um, and those uh, um, 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 people. So um, the situation is complex. Um, let me mention, I think this is uh, developing news right now, uh, um, I think that uh, Netanyahu's government is currently now uh, beginning, in fact, some kind of an operation that only crushes more the Arab population inside Israel. Lass mich, um, bevor wir da, darauf kommen, um, Nesrin, uh, yeah. ich möchte dich jetzt zwei, Wochen, uh, zwei Sachen fragen. Das eine ist, uh, du hast <lacht> ein paar Mal zwischen euch hm, ha, hm, gemacht. Waren da, waren da Punkte, wo du eigentlich gerne eingehakt hättest, 
<lacht> und widersprochen hättest oder war das alles Zustimmung? Nassim, never hesitate to stop me in the, in the middle and yeah. demand an answer to something. Um, nee, eigentlich, also ich habe total gerne zugehört. Um, ich, uh, ich, ich, ich kann das nicht so differenziert betrachten von den Ereignissen der letzten, lass mich sagen, zwei Wochen. Wie hast du die erlebt? Wie hast du war, die erlebt? Ja, um, ne, ja ich habe ganz, ganz viel Ungerechtigkeit gesehen und ich habe sie teilweise live miterlebt über Social Media. <lacht> und um, ich, ich habe halt nicht so viel Hoffnung gesehen, beziehungsweise ich sehe nicht so viel Hoffnung. Also diese Hoffnung, von der ähm, hier gesprochen wird, die, die fühle ich nicht, die sehe ich nicht. Und, und, ähm, und ich, ich, ich suche diesen, diesen, diesen einen Punkt, um daran festzuhalten, dass es halt wirklich möglich ist. Dass es möglich ist, dass die Menschen, die ähm, dann in, diesem ein, in dieser Einstaatlösung leben, dass sie halt wirklich alle als gleichwertig behandelt und gesehen und geachtet werden. Ähm, die Ereignisse der letzten zwei Wochen ähm, und da ist es halt, glaube ich, wo wir auseinandergehen in der Meinung, ich kann das irgendwie nicht voneinander trennen, weil sie halt wirklich ein Spiegel sind, ein Spiegelbild von dem sind, was aktuell passiert. Denn es ist ja nicht so, dass, ähm, dass die Menschen äh, total glücklich waren und auf einmal irgendwie von heute auf morgen auf die Straße gegangen sind und demonstriert haben und Rechte eingefordert haben und Widerstand geleistet haben. Und gleichzeitig ist es halt auch nicht so, dass ähm, von heute auf morgen die Sicherheitsbehörden in Israel auf diese Menschen losgegangen ist. Das ist ja etwas, ein Prozess, der aufeinander gebaut hat und, ähm, und denen so irgendwie... Zu, zu, ich will nicht sagen zu ignorieren, aber ihn nicht zu betrachten und einfließen zu lassen in diesem Gespräch, empfinde ich als ein bisschen, ja, weiß ich nicht, passt halt irgendwie nicht. Nasrin, um, if I understand you correctly, um, then um, now we need to uh, completely disagree. But not about the situation, but about uh, what I said. Because I think that there was nothing in what I said that suggested that um, um, things were fine inside of Israel or that there was uh, some kind of an equality or a, a just and fair cohabitation uh, uh, to Palestinian Israelis. I think just the opposite. I think I, I you know, I, I mean it when I say that Palestinians are second class citizens in Israel. Um, I write about this extensively in the book. I, I, it means something when I say that those, uh, uh, that this community, that this uh, people um, uh, is one people Uh, that is fully aware um, um, of, say, the Nakba and uh, um, uh, the expulsion of their own families and uh, the way that their own families uh, uh, are refugees um, 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 and that Israel has laws that prevent those people from receiving their rights. Um, um, nothing, I, I do not see how anything that I said suggested um, that this can be or should be diminished. I think that um, what we've seen now in Israel is an expression of uh, how much it ought not be diminished. However, I was also trying to suggest to see that um, there are anchors uh, uh, to hold on to in order to um, uh, um, try to produce um, an actually way forward. I can give you more examples and I'm going to do this in a second because I think they're going to interest you. Um, I'm not sure if the upshot of what you're saying is that you actually uh, want to support the two-state solution yourself, um, 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 you will tell us in a moment. Um, mm -hmm. And I understand that, again, as I said, do not hesitate to jump and interrupt me. Um, 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 some people might say that given uh, the situation of Palestinians uh, um, uh, living with Jews, the Palestinians want Palestinian sovereignty. We speak about Jewish sovereignty. We say the Jews have good reasons to have uh, uh, or to want Jewish Uh, sovereignty, the Palestinians have a claim to the same. They can say, uh, uh, no, no, um, there, are, there is a refugee problem. Uh, uh, we've been crushed uh, uh, by world powers, by uh, the state of Israel uh, for too long. We need a Palestinian state, not a binational state, a Palestinian state, a Palestinian sovereignty that can defend Palestinian rights, that can defend Palestinian lives. Und so weiter und so fort. I don't know if that's the upshot of what you're saying, that for um, those reasons you'd like to insist on the two-state solution. My answer to you would be that um, I do not think that um, uh, that's realistic because there is not going to be a two-state solution for the reasons that I, um, uh, that I named and um, that I do not think that um, such a Palestinian state would be able 
to jetzt defend. Lass, jetzt lass nice reden, weil du, du hast, ähm, You're right. ist, ist, deine, ist deine Vorstellung, dass es eben doch eine Zwei-Staaten-Lösung geben sollte, ähm, wo dann jede Seite sozusagen äh, für sich äh, national souverän ist? Ja, also ähm, ich glaube, so weit ähm, denke ich nicht. Ich denke gerade an die aktuelle Situation. Ich denke gerade daran, dass äh, Menschenrechtsverletzungen, äh, dass es Menschenrechtsverletzungen gibt, dass Kriegsverbrechen, dass es Kriegsverbrechen gibt, dass äh, UN-Resolutionen gebrochen werden und dass äh, also wenn wenn all die Rechte, wenn, wenn ich als Palästinenserin oder ähm, oder viele viele Millionen andere Palästinenserinnen ihre Rechte erlangt haben, wenn die Blockade über Gaza äh, aufgehoben wurde, wenn die äh, wenn die Gefangenen nicht mehr in den Gefängnissen inhaftiert werden, wenn all diese Dinge nicht mehr existieren, dann kann man halt, also dann habe ich auch wirklich diese Hoffnung, von der hier gesprochen wird und dann kann ich sagen, ja, lasst uns gemeinsam an einer Einstaatenlösung arbeiten oder wie auch immer, aber ähm, oder auch zwei Staatenlösung, wenn es möglich ist, aber ähm, vorher habe ich halt, ich persönlich als Nesrin, ein Problem damit, diese Hoffnung äh, zu spüren oder irgendwie einen Anhaltspunkt wenigstens zu haben. Nesrin, uh I think we completely agree about that. I uh, um, I think that um, um, uh, there is a massive uh, um, problem with international law. I think that uh, um, international law and the Fourth Geneva Convention um, 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 they're uh, being broken on a daily basis. I think that uh, the blockade on Gaza is uh, uh, a horrifying crime. I think it has to be uplifted. I hope much much before um, the Haifa Republic will come to be. I think those are uh, um, urgent and important uh, political uh, uh, causes to fight for, and they are immediate and, uh, um, and need to be done. Um, absolutely. So, um, uh, and mentioning them is important. I agree with you. Um, uh, perhaps we've been speaking, uh, or I've been speaking, too much about uh, grand schemes of, you know, trying to imagine a certain alternative. Perhaps um, um, we should not forget also the more concrete, not small, but more concrete um, um, uh, issues. For example, the blockade on Gaza. I, I completely agree about that. Um, let me, let me uh, give you an example. Israel mm -hmm. basically does not recognize the applicability of the first Geneva Convention on the West Bank. What's the argument for that thing? The argument is an occupied land, by the definition of the law, is land that was taken over from a sovereign state. The West Bank was not taken from a sovereign state, the argument goes, because uh, the Palestinians did not have a state and because Jordan's sovereignty over the West Bank was not recognized by the international community. So there is actually a look in uh, uh, the law And for that reason, the law of what counts as legal occupation and what's not, or what counts as legal actions of an occupying force, do not apply. And it's not like another law applies. International law just does not regulate it because there is a look. That's um, um, you know, brilliant. I'm kidding. It's not brilliant. It's, a, um, it's a, an awful um, uh, legal trick in order to claim that A lot of things that are illegal by uh, um, international law are actually legal. For example, the whole settlements project is a war crime. Let me say it again. The settlement project is a war crime um, by these international standards. Israel claims that uh, those international standards do not apply, so there is a settlement project. Here's a question, and uh, you'll see how much um, I'm with you on this. Here's a question to the German government. Um, The International Court in The Hague um, um, has um, uh, started a process of interrogation of war crimes, um, um, of Israeli actions. Um, Israel, of course, contests um, the jurisdiction of that court in the occupied territories um, for reasons similar, not exactly the ones that I mentioned, but similar to the ones um, that I just mentioned. I was extremely disappointed to find, uh, uh, not completely surprised, but completely disappointed to find uh, um, the German government supporting Israel's um, undermining of the jurisdiction 
um, of the international court in the occupied forces. You want to support Israel's right to defend itself? Be my guest. Israel has a right to defend itself. But mm -hmm. the borders, the limits of what counts as self-defense and what counts as a war crime is defined by international law. And um, we have to insist that that law applies. If I understand you correctly, that's a very concrete way of answering, uh, for example, to the worries um, 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 that you bring up. Um, I do not expect the German government to support um, um, uh, an investigation of Israel for war crimes in the international uh, um, Lass mich, lass mich da schnell einhaken. Wir haben diese Frage gestellt in der Bundespressekonferenz Aha. und äh, die Antwort der Bundesregierung äh, durch das Auswärtige Amt, also Sprecher äh, des Auswärtigen Amtes war, ja, ähm, da eben äh, es keinen souveränen Staat gibt, keinen äh, souveränen Staat, äh, keinen souveränen Palästinenserstaat, könne das eben nicht vor dem Gerichtshof in Den Haag verhandelt werden, weil dort nur souveräne Staaten ähm, Klage erheben könnten. Und dann war die Frage, die Kollegen gestellt haben, wo sollen denn dann die Palästinenser, denen das Recht auf eine eigene Staatlichkeit derzeit verweigert wird, wohin sollen sie sich denn dann wenden? Wer ist ihre Klageadresse? Und da kam keine Antwort von der Bundesregierung, weil es darauf auch keine Antwort gibt. Of course it doesn't give uh, an answer, but um, um, I would like to suggest that um, um, the situation is even worse. Because um, I take the um, uh, lawyers and uh, jurists of the International Court in The Hague to be competent uh, 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 juristen. I suggest that the uh, German uh, uh, government would let them decide about their jurisdiction. And when the German government uh, uh, meddles with that uh, jurisdiction, by the way, also with the United States, um, then they harm um, the sovereignty of the court. Um, to do that, if I understand things correctly, not because you just believe that this is truth and justice, but because you feel this is somehow your um, uh, responsibility as a German, is, uh, um, or maybe because this is just popular politics in Germany. That seems to me to be um, um, an awful way uh, to understand your responsibility as a German to your past. Germany, by all means, should stand by Israel. Uh, um, uh, um, Mas uh, gave that statement speaking about Israel's right to defend itself as uh, non-negotiable. Israel's right to defend itself is no negotiable. Let me say very clearly, I don't know if this surprises anybody here, I completely agree. Israel's right to defend itself is non-negotiable. The only way to take that seriously, however, is to insist that there is a border between self-defense and actions um, um, that do not count as self-defense, but rather as uh, crushing Palestinians' rights, attacking the Palestinians and even perpetrating um, 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 crimes war crimes. And um, I fear that, that when we hear statements like masses, Israel's right to defend itself is non-negotiable. This non-negotiability clause is precisely meant to blurry that line, to say, whatever Israel does, we stand by it. Not Israel's right to defend itself is non-negotiable. And that, by the way, harms uh, Palestinians, and it harms also Jews because also Jews need international law uh, to have its teeth. And right now we have a strong military. Um, um, I, 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 I'm for strong international law, uh, not just for a strong military. Nesrin, du hast das letzte Wort in diesem Gespräch. Um, vielleicht eine Frage. Mm -hmm. um, also ich, ich verstehe, dass ich verstehe die Aussage, dass Israel das Recht hat, sich zu verteidigen. Und da setze ich einen Punkt. Und dann setze ich meine nächste Frage an. Haben PalästinenserInnen das Recht, sich zu verteidigen? Absolut. Und wenn ja, wie? I think that you ask an important question, even though I think that from uh, what I've said, my, uh, my answer, uh, I hope, is obvious to you. The Palestinians have absolutely the right, the right to defend themselves. 
And I think that uh, it's absolutely true that the Palestinians are under attack. Their rights are under attack. Um, um, uh, their sources of living are, are under attack, and they have the right to defend themselves. I think that some of the um, um, debates about BDS haven't taken account of that fact um, um, clearly enough. Um, whatever way the Palestinians have to defend themselves um, are considered anti-Semitic because they involve somehow going against um, uh, Jews, right? So definitely uh, attacking Jewish cities or Israeli cities is uh, not um, something that the Palestinians have a right. By the way, just so that we're absolutely clear and um, you can uh, uh, tell me in a moment if you wish. I hope we can agree that uh, shooting uh, missiles on, and rockets on, um, arbitrarily on Israeli uh, civilians is absolutely unacceptable. So I do not consider this a legitimate form of uh, quote-unquote self-defense. I think this is uh, a war crime. And um, um, I have absolutely no um, uh, tolerance uh, to the firing of missiles on uh, um, uh, cities where... Um, civilians live, Jewish or Arab. However, there can be other forms of um, Palestinian self-defense um, um, and uh, they can be legitimate and um, it needs to be stated very clearly because I do think that when Germans speak about Israel's right to defend itself as non-negotiable, then there is basically the assumption that the Palestinians do not enjoy the same right. I think that the right of Palestinians for self-defense is as important as the right of um, um, uh, Jews to self-defense. Yeah, um, ja, vielen Dank. Um, ja, vielen Dank auf jeden Fall für das Gespräch und ich gehe mir jetzt einen Kaffee machen, damit ich die, Letz die letzten, ich glaube, 40 Minuten noch, dann yep. werden drei Stunden <lacht> zuhören kann. Okay, Thanks. danke schön. Danke schön, danke auch. Yeah. Hast du oft solche Gespräche? Auf jeden Fall. Yeah. I sometimes have them um, also in New York with mm -hmm. um, um, some people who are, um, some Palestinians, um, uh, um, some Israeli Jews. Um, yes, I have such conversations. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, ich habe dich eben so verstanden, dass du gesagt hast, ja, völlig klar, das Recht auf Selbstverteidigung äh, existiert, auch für die Palästinenser. Du hast dann aber auch gesagt, äh, einfach Raketen rüber zu feuern, ähm, im Grunde wahllos und, und in äh, Gebiete, die so oder so bewohnt sind, fällt nicht darunter. Ähm, Absolut nicht. Absolut nicht. Let me give weil, you weil, weil die Frage würde natürlich äh, kommen, sind dann die Hamas-Raketen Bestandteil des Selbstverteidigungsrechts des äh, palästinensischen Volkes? Absolutely not. The, let me give you an example to answer this clearly. I, I hope this uh, is not controversial. Um, um, in those firings, not so many Israelis died. But Wegen dem Iron Dome, um, unter anderem. That's right. And, um, 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 but at, at least one Israeli, if not more, who died, mm. well, happened to be a, a Palestinian Israeli. Mm. Um, um, and something amazing happened when this uh, Palestinian Israeli uh, was killed, a 16-year-old uh, um, uh, young woman. Something amazing happened. Some of the right-wing, allegedly legitimate, but obviously not, right-wing um, um, media people in Israel uh, made fun of that. They said that it's poetic justice. Some said that this was um, uh, too bad that then only one. We've mm. seen that not just among some racists on the street, but also among, um, um, also among uh, uh, TV personalities. We agree, I hope, that this is sheer racism of the ja, worst type. Und, und es ist, uh, es ist menschenverachtender Zynismus. But pass off, but pass off. Yeah. So what was the Hamas supposed to, uh, to hope? That they would kill Jews and not Palestinians. That's a good example, uh, a good way of understanding that mm -hmm. firing rockets on civilians arbitrarily, hoping to kill Jews rather than Palestinians, is absolutely unacceptable 
and um, uh, perpetrating such crimes is not part of self-defense. It's part of perpetrating crimes. Now, we understand, mm -hmm. we need to say, that the Palestinians um, um, have a problem of self-defense because uh, they hardly have the power. That's a major argument for BDS, for example. The major argument for BDS is precisely to say this. Look, the Palestinians have a right to exist, and for that reason, the Palestinians have a right to resist. Um, um, they're no match to the Israeli uh, Streitkräfte. They cannot really uh, just attack Israeli soldiers and achieve anything. Um, um, they're looking for non-violent methods to make the world alert, to take a prize from Israel, and so I don't support. I do not support BDS for other reasons, mm. but that, for example, is a fully legitimate way to go about things. When Israel sagen kann, und das ist Fakt, wir werden beschossen mit Raketen zu Tausenden aus dem Gazastreifen. Gott sei Dank haben wir den Iron Dome, der die meisten abfängt. Und um diese Infrastruktur zu zerstören, fliegen wir gezielte Bombenangriffe. Fällt, erstens ist das verhältnismäßig, die israelischen Angriffe. Und zweitens fällt das unter Israels Recht auf Selbstverteidigung. The answer in this case, um, that becomes complicated, right? Because it's true that those rockets are being fired from within cities. Um, um, that I think that fact cannot be, um, uh, cannot be ignored. It's true that uh, Palestinians, at least sometimes, or that not Palestinians, that Hamas, Hamas at least yes. sometimes, um, um, is uh, um, using civilian population. Uh, in order to make it difficult uh, 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 to hit those rockets without um, um, also killing civilians. Um, I think that ought not be denied. That is also a war crime. By the way, um, that's also the type of crime that uh, The Hague not just should investigate, but suggested to investigate. And I think that investigation should not be undermined either. Um, however, the Hamas asked for a ceasefire almost immediately, in, in the last case, almost immediately after the escalation started, whatever happened in uh, Al-Aqsa um, was followed by uh, a few rockets mm -hmm. shot in the direction of Jerusalem. Israel um, responded uh, very much with Netanyahu's interests uh, um, with an all-out uh, bombing, and Hamas asked immediately for a ceasefire, and I have reasons to believe that um, 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 there would have been a ceasefire if Israel agreed. Only that this did not suit Netanyahu. And this did not suit, um, uh, um, I suppose, some people in the military who thought that this is also now a good opportunity to settle a few uh, points, say, to destroy um, 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 the arsenals of the rockets, say, to kill or assassinate um, uh, some of the engineers and some of the uh, commanders of those Sind rockets. Sind das legitime Gründe? No. So um, I think... Uh, the, the point, my point was exactly that, that at that moment, the legitimate way of self-defense was to have a ceasefire and uh, not to continuously bomb Gaza. You want to stop, to stop um, uh, the missiles on civilian population? Mm -hmm. You can. And you can probably, uh, in that situation, I'm not saying that's always the case, in that, in that specific mm -hmm. situation, I think, um, um, I think we have reasons to believe very much that um, the firing of rockets on Israelis would have stopped. Um, the only thing that eventually stopped it was a ceasefire, and a ceasefire could have been um, uh, attained almost immediately after. That was not the intention, uh, not of Netanyahu, and not of, um, um, and not of at least what seems to be some of the generals. Let me add another thing. Um, I think that the blockade on Gaza has to be lifted. That cannot be said um, um, enough. And um, almost nothing is legitimate when you treat a population in this way. Um, um, and then da sind wir wieder beim Freiluftgefängnis. Yes. Okay. Danke. Und wir haben wen jetzt am Telefon? Hallo Hans, hier ist die Jenny. Jenny. Die Jenny. <lacht> Lange nicht gehört. Unsere Jenny. <lacht> ja, vom Einmischen Podcast. Ja. Und ähm, ich habe mir heute auch nochmal das Video von Omri angeguckt, das Thilo mit ihm hatte, ich glaube letztes Jahr im Sommer. Und ich wollte eigentlich auf die Umfrage zurückkommen, die du am Anfang erwähnt hast. Omri meinte ja, das gibt ihm Hoffnung, dass ich glaube 63 Prozent der Leute nicht genau einschätzen konnten, ja. ob Israel für die Situation 
aktuell im Nahen Osten verantwortlich ist oder Palästinenser. Und meine Frage wäre eher in die Richtung, was Hans darüber denkt, wer dafür wiederum verantwortlich ist. Glaubst du, dass die deutsche Medienlandschaft da in den letzten Jahren aufklärerisch eher tätig war, in die Richtung auch, dass durch Berichte aus Israel gezeigt wurde, welche doch eher rechtsextreme Haltung vor allem die Regierung Netanyahu hat, welche Korruption da herrscht und wie destabilisierend das nicht nur für den ganzen Nahen Osten ist, sondern auch für die Demokratie in Israel selber. Oder liegt es eher an solchen Foren wie das Forum hier Jung und Naiv, die von Ort auch kritische israelische Stimmen einfangen, die ihre eigene Regierung dafür kritisieren, wie der Umgang unter anderem in den besetzten Gebieten mit den Palästinensern ist. Also ich will da die Antwort gar nicht scheuen. Ich nehme jetzt erstmal die Gelegenheit wahr, eine Empfehlung zu geben. Ja, guckt euch die Reportagen an, die Thilo und Tyler aus Nahost gemacht haben. Aus sehr unter, also sie waren vor Ort, sie haben mit Menschen sehr unterschiedlicher Position Herkunft äh, gesprochen. Das sind, wie ich finde, sehr gute Beispiele eines, eines, eines realitätsnahen ähm, aufklärerischen Journalismus. Du hast, äh, Omri, einige von denen auch schon äh, ja. gesehen. Ich möchte jetzt aber die Frage, die, die Jenny äh, gestellt hat, die gebe ich mal ähm, an dich weiter, weil du ja auch lange Zeit in Deutschland äh, jetzt doch gelebt hast, immer mal wieder. Wie nimmst du die Berichterstattung deutscher Medien über die Situation in Nahost war. Yeah, I actually um, I made a note to myself at some point I think when Nasrin spoke. I'm mm. not sure. I think when Nasrin spoke uh, to to comment on this. I'm not sure that um, um, yeah, I'm not sure that um, the claim that um, look, I do not think that the reports about the situation are fair. But I don't think that they are completely one-sided or completely um, blind to the situation. I think that um, um, people like me can have a voice in Germany. I think that uh, not just that. I think that um, uh, people like David Grossman, people like uh, Amos Oz in the past, uh, people like uh, uh, Zimmermann um, uh, speak regularly and uh, write regularly uh, in uh, German media. And, um, you know, I, I've been extremely um, critical of, uh, say, uh, someone like David Grossman's position on um, um, Israeli issues. But uh, we cannot say that uh, um, deeply critical uh, positions about the situation in Israel um, uh, do not receive a prominent voice. In fact, you could say that, um, uh, but you will correct me in a moment if I'm uh, wrong about that, that extremely critical Israelis are actually probably the most prominent um, uh, ones appearing in the media. The way that attacks on Gaza are reported, the way the questions are being framed, that's already another question. For example, when we constantly speak ich, ich about... Glaube, ja, ich glaube, Jenny ähm, wollte darauf abzielen, ähm, auf die nachrichtliche Berichterstattung. Right. Also was haben deutsche Fernsehzuschauer, ja. äh, Radiohörer oder auch Leser von Zeitungen erfahren, über die Situation, über Hintergründe, über Bewertungen, war das fair ja, oder also war das bei? Ähm, ja, kann ich, kann ich noch kurz ergänzen, ja. weil für mich ähm, war dann auch wichtig, ich habe zum Beispiel aus, gleich am Anfang, nicht dann im Pearl of the letzten Wochen und Tage, sondern sofort am Anfang von der öffentlich-rechtlichen Blase, das soll jetzt keine Beleidigung sein, sondern so allgemein mitbekommen, dass es halt Ausschreitungen unter anderem in Jerusalem durch die palästinensische Bevölkerung gab. Gleichzeitig habe ich aber unter anderem auf Twitter gesehen die Bilder aus der Moschee. Und dann hat sich das Bild, das ich von der ganzen Eskalation hatte, halt auch ein bisschen verändert, weil ich durchaus nachvollziehen kann, dass Menschen zu Recht angepisst sind, wenn man an ihrem heiligsten religiösen Tag in ihr heiligstes Gebäude eindringt und dort auch unter anderem Tränengas verliest. Was natürlich keine Entschuldigung sein soll dafür, dass ähm, Bomben auf Israel geschossen wurden. Aber es hat ein anderes Bild ergeben von dem, was ich vorher mitbekommen hatte, 
von verschiedenen auch Journalistinnen und Journalisten ähm, zu der öffentlich-rechtlichen Blase, sagen wir es mal so. Das hat sich auch im Laufe der Tage dann anders entwickelt, muss ich auch sagen. Um, um, look, Jenny, I do not know about, um, I do not know to answer you specifically about German media um, and the way that um, uh, last events, those last events were reported in the German media. Um, um, I, I can imagine that they, that greatly fair they were not in my experience. I was not here. I was not uh, watching regularly, uh, say, German television or, or anything of the sort. But um, uh, by means of discussion, let me tell you that I did follow, say, the reports coming from America, from uh, the US. Mm. And um, something extremely interesting happened, uh, and it's at least related to um, um, uh, your question, and it may also um, uh, tell us something about the future of reporting about the situation. The New York Times has changed its position in a revolutionary way. Um, the New York Times reported on the situation of Palestinians as um, one of the main issues that need to be on the table. This was opening even the front pages. Um, um, you would suddenly have a Palestinian person writing, um, I live in East Jerusalem, this is what my life looks like. Um, 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 you had multiple, interestingly enough, as this was happening, you had um, articles about the Nakba uh, um, uh, published in the New York Times. Um, there was a feeling that something did not just change, but radically change in the New York Times as, let's say, a, um, you know, a, um, a thermometer of um, how things go for, let's say, um, the Democratic Party or the Democratic establishment, right? Not the fringe. The establishment of the Democratic Party has started to uh, speak in uh, different voices. I think maybe they changed their, their way of going about this um, um, in 180 pr um, uh, degrees. Um, it will be interesting to see whether uh, some German media follows suit and um, uh, starts to report also differently about the actual situation on the ground. My feeling is that um, um, some trends that I sometimes also criticize, this is for a longer uh, um, uh, and a, a different discussion that started this evening with questions about Kant and identity politics. I'm not always the greatest fan of um, uh, you know, the woke um, uh, tendencies um, among um, uh, in American journalism today. I think they are powerful and I think that um, um, uh, this trickles down to the reporting on the situation in Palestine. Um, uh, the New York Times now understands, it seems to me, I cannot speak for the New York Times, I, you know, not, I do not walk there, obviously, um, um, but I read it and I also, let's say, orbit in some places where I sometimes hear more than just uh, reading it and sometimes writing for it. Um, my, my impression is that, um, my impression is, you know, um, Ehud Barak, Israel's uh, former uh, prime minister, he spoke about a, um, a diplomatic tsunami, he called it, that was going to, um, that Israel is going to face with uh, a world public opinion shifting dramatically against it. He said it already a few years ago and he was mocked. My suspicion is reading the Times, uh, reading the New Yorker, reading the newspapers of the, the American establishment, um, or not the establishment, the elite. Mm. My impression was that uh, um, people in Israel will have to start understanding that this tsunami is coming and um, uh, German media might follow suit. Woran liegt das, dass sich dass ich das in den USA offenbar in den Medien verändert? Wir hatten mit äh, Trump einen, der sozusagen eine radikal andere Position äh, hatte. Äh, Trump war sozusagen der Tsunami als Rückenwind für right. Netanyahu. Ähm, woran liegt es, dass, ist das jetzt einfach eine Gegenbewegung des Pendels? ist zu sehr, also Journalismus heißt ja als allererstes mal sagen, was ist. I ähm, hope so. Ja, natürlich. Ja. Wir, wir gucken dann alle als Journalisten immer durch unsere Filter und unsere Vorurteile. Das ist, und trotzdem, 
ähm, versuchen zu erkennen, was ist und sagen, was ist. So ist jetzt nach Trump, dem, Rücken, dem großen Rückenwind für Netanyahu, sind die anderen Töne in den großen amerikanischen Medien einfach die Gegenbewegung des Pendels oder ist es was anderes? I think it's deeply related to this. I'm, I was interested in something we said about journalismus ist um, um, allen uh, ersten um, uh, sagen was ist. Genau. Yeah. It's nice because of course there is this famous statement that says uh, to say what is is a revolutionary act. So you just made, you know, just do the Schluss and um, the Schlussfolgerung and mm -hmm. you, um, uh, you deduce uh, journalism is essentially revolutionary uh, uh, profession. That's interesting. Ich würde eher sagen mm -hmm. eine aufklärerische. Yeah. Well, in Kann my reading of uh, Kant's okay. Aufklärung's <laughs> essay, uh, it's a deeply revolutionary <laughs> text, but we can talk okay. about this yeah. um, some other time. The, uh, <laughs> I really do believe that. Um, <laughs> look, um, here is something I can, uh, uh, again, you will excuse a self-reference. In 2016, um, December 2016, um, Trump was already elected. Mm -hmm. but not yet in office. Two weeks, one week before uh, his uh, inauguration, I published um, an article for the New York Times. The article was called Liberal Zionism in the Age of Trump. Mm -hmm. And the claim was exactly that. It was, look, um, American Jews and um, uh, the democratic establishment um, um, and the democratic elite has been living for years in a contradiction. The contradiction was that those people truly are liberal, liberal in the sense of progressive, liberal in the sense of supporting, not liberal just in the right-wing liberal, but liberal in the sense of uh, believing in the equal rights of everybody, everybody und so weiter und so fort. When it comes to Israel, they flip. When it comes to Israel, um, um, they accept an illiberal ideology, namely Zionism, the idea that um, uh, Israel is a Jewish state and not the state of all of its citizens, they are willing to tolerate that. And the claim was that is going to become impossible to do under Trump. It's going to become impossible to do it because that form of ethnic nationalism is um, uh, going to be fully delegitimized And this is going to spill out to the open of American politics because Israel collaborates with Trump so uh, uh, closely, so intimately. Trump himself, it's difficult to say that Trump himself is an anti-Semite. He even has uh, a, um, a daughter, uh, um, uh, Ivanka, who converted to Judaism. Um, but Trump has legitimized and more than tolerated um, um, great anti-Semitic forces like Bannon. Israel mm -hmm. had no problem with those people. Israel uh, loved collaborating with those right-wing racists who are also anti-Semites. That created a, a, a crack in the relation of um, the democratic elite and the uh, Jewish democratic, previously or not just previously, still liberal Zionist elite um, um, in, uh, among the Democrats uh, in places like, say, New York. And once Trump was uh, kicked out, um, it, w it was impossible to um, tolerate that relation to Israel anymore. Israel remained as um, an obvious uh, symbol of doing uh, politics Trump's way. And um, things that uh, were legitimate before, or at least were tolerated, even if people knew in some uh, uh, corner of their minds that they are illegitimate, um, became things that you would not tolerate. And um, um, I think that a lot of people in the New York Times now, it seems obvious, they're not willing to tolerate it. And they feel that it's their duty to report on that and to report on this in an equal way and in a just way. And for that reason, we're witnessing a, a massive change. Um, um, my claim back then in 2016 was that those people will have to make a choice. They will either have to go to the right and support Israel and Zionism as right-wing people, or they will have to reconsider their relation to Israel and um, 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 not just to the occupation, but to the very idea of a Jewish state. And this is, um, I think, quite obviously what we're seeing. 
Jenny, welche, weil deine Frage sich ja aber doch auch auf die Berichterstattung und vor allem die nachrichtliche Berichterstattung deutscher Medien bezog, wie würdest du die bewerten oder was würdest du daran kritisieren? Es ist schwierig, also in Deutschland, also jetzt auch als Deutsche, über den Konflikt im Nahen Osten zu sprechen und dann die israelische Regierung zu kritisieren, da kommt man immer ganz schnell in eine Grauzone, die, ähm, wo man auch sehr schnell abrutschen kann. Das habe ich unter anderem bei der Debatte auch auf den sozialen Medien gesehen, wo ich auch immer sehr stark aufpasse, dass ich sage, die israelische Regierung, nicht der Staat Israel, weil schon das auch als antisemitisch wahrgenommen werden kann, weil ähm, also interpretiert werden könnte, als ob man etwas gegen den Staat oder die Existenz des Staates Israel an sich hat. Was, also, was es auch schwierig macht, über das, die ganze Situation halt zu sprechen. Und was ich sagen kann, was ich so mitbekommen habe, ist, dass es durchaus die Bemühungen gibt, den Konflikt so darzustellen, wie er halt ist. Und nicht alleine da aufzuhören, wo unter anderem Herr Maaßens Aussage aufgehört hat, nämlich wir unterstützen das Recht auf Selbstverteidigung des Staates Israel, was ja auch richtig ist. Nur geht es halt darüber auch nicht hinaus. Also die diplomatischen Bemühungen müssen halt tiefer gehen, als der Staat Israel hat das Recht, sich selbst zu verteidigen. Um Frieden in der Region zu schaffen, muss man auch die Verantwortung der israelischen Regierung gegenüber der Menschen in den besetzten Gebieten halt gerecht werden. Und ich finde, da gibt es einige auch Entwicklungen in der deutschen Medienlandschaft, die in diese Richtung gehen um darzustellen, dass es halt keine Situation ist, die, wenn man Frieden will, länger haltbar ist. Meine Frage wäre auch nochmal an Omri in die Richtung, stellen wir uns vor, jetzt gibt es Neuwahlen ähm, und Netanyahu gewinnt wieder. Oder er verliert. Also in welche Richtung könnte sich das dann entwickeln? Also gibt es eine Möglichkeit in in Richtung diplomatische Bemühungen ohne Netanyahu? Also, oder meine Frage wohl eher in die Richtung, ist die israelische Gesellschaft nach den letzten Tagen und Wochen eher bereit, Netanyahu abzuwählen, als ihn wiederzuwählen? Oder hat ihm das geholfen für die nächsten Wahlen? Hard to say, um, but uh, my, sus my suspicion is that um, um, the events did not harm Netanyahu. There are ways in which they could harm Netanyahu. Well, the events in a concrete, immediate way saved Netanyahu. Without these events, he would not be in office right now. Um, the corners of doubt of that I can also explain, but this is for real experts of this uh, baseball, and we do not need to enter that here. However, um, um, I think it's extremely likely that Netanyahu will be the next prime minister uh, of Israel. I think it's extremely important to say that even if Netanyahu was replaced by the coalition that was supposed to emerge instead of him, things would not have looked better in terms of the relation to the Palestinians and arguably worse. Palesti um, uh, Netanyahu is all sorts of things um, um, that I uh, deeply disagree with. He is not the most um, um, right-wing anti-Palestinian radical. He is bad enough on that uh, account as, uh, as well. But um, uh, Naftali Bennett, Avigdor Lieberman, and Gidon Saar, three politicians who were supposed to be prominent on the alternative government that was supposed to replace Netanyahu, um, uh, they're much worse. And um, I think that needs to be uh, uh, noticed. So I do not see a lot of um, hope um, uh, currently for an emerging coalition that would do better, uh, that would have a better record um, with the Palestinians. But I do see two other, let's say, things that need, that need to be mentioned um, as an answer to your question. One is, I think we will not have hope unless we will understand that right now the task is not to form an alternative coalition, but to form a functioning, powerful, kicking opposition. Right now, there is no opposition in Israel. There was no opposition to this war. There is no opposition, there is no real opposition to the, um, um, uh, to the occupation of the Palestinians anymore, let me say that. 
Um, Merav Michaeli, um, uh, a woman who has uh, received a lot of uh, very positive press, I think, in Germany when she managed allegedly to revive Israel's um, uh, left, um, is a progressive, um, a real progressive of salt, um, um, a Tel Avivian, who refuses, or not, not accurate, who tends to most of the time only speak in uh, feminine declinations as part of her being a feminist. Great, but she would not mention the word occupation. Mm. And when she's being asked about that, she would not mention the word. She thinks it's controversial and uh, she thinks this is for politically correct people on the left to speak about the occupation of the Palestinians. That shows you something about the, um, 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 uh, the stage in which Israel's so-called opposition is. It's not surprising that this Merab Michaeli would, would have been a minister um, in the alternative coalition, um, um, uh, together with Avigdor Lieberman, uh, Gidon Saar, and Naftali Bennett as prime minister, some of the uh, greatest um, and most dangerous right-wing ideologues um, uh, currently in parliament. Um, so I do not see a lot of um, um, uh, chances to a coalition, but can we revive an opposition? Can we now see the forces that are um, also acting as a response to the events that happen? And I'll say a word about that. Emerging as um, a serious pushback that would actually start to um, uh, speak differently about the situation among Jews and among Palestinian Israelis who can join forces and um, um, maybe act together with some parliamentary uh, power, because I'm not sure how much of this uh, was reported here. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Um, but not everything was bad in uh, the escalations that we witnessed. There was also a pushback of Jews and Palestinians now really doing politics together in order to counter that. L here's an example that I wanted to mention to Nasrin, uh, um, uh, uh, but the conversation with her was too short. Um, um, uh, something beautiful happened um, to the Palestinian uh, society. The Palestinians in the West Bank announced um, a general strike in the West Bank because of the events. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, but take this with a grain of salt, if I'm not mistaken, for the first time in history, Palestinian Israelis announced that because they are now one people fighting together, they strike with them. Mm -hmm. So a, a, a general strike of Palestinian Israelis um, was announced in solidarity with Palestinians in the West Bank. I think it's a great development. It threatens Israelis because Israelis don't like to think of Palestinian Israelis as part of the Palestinian people. That challenges everything. But that um, um, important moment ensued. And it's pass south. Meretz, the liberal Zionist party that I used to vote for, but I'm now often criticizing for um, uh, holding alive the dreams of uh, um, the two-state solution and liberal Zionism and so forth. Meretz announced not that they would strike with them, but they are in solidarity with the strike. And they called out to the Israeli forces of, say, um, workers' union inside Israel. They called upon them publicly to respect the strike. To, um, uh, to have solidarity with it, to defend the rights of the Palestinians. So for a moment you could see Israelis actually doing joint politics in a very subversive way for liberal Zionists. The strike not just of Palestinian Israelis, but the strike of liberal Israelis, sorry, of uh, Palestinian Israelis with Palestinians in the West Bank. And Meretz um, made sure to also support that. Can, for example, we see could we see how practices of this sort develop into a genuine collaboration of a party like Meretz, which will have to be transformed in order to speak of a one-state solution? Because note, this is a one-state type of politics when the Palestinians on the whole territory strike together and an Israeli liberal Zionist party actually sort of supports them. Um, um, so that, that's one... Um, um, positive development in the direction of opposition that we can see. The other thing that I'll say fast, the American, um, um, uh, the American politics. We come uh, to that later on. All right. That will be the, the, the final right. round. Um, Jenny, 
Danke okay. schön. <lacht> Danke, <auch. lacht> Danke sehr. Ähm, eine Frage, bevor wir nächste, ich weiß nicht, wie viel machen wir noch? Wir, ähm, gut, wird dann der letzte äh, Anruf sein. Ähm, eine Frage, die beim Thema Medien oder deutsche Medien äh, natürlich irgendwie <lacht> dann auch brennt. Äh, es gibt einen großen Medienkonzern, da gehört Solidarität äh, mit dem Staat Israel zur Unternehmenspolitik. Das unterschreiben Journalisten, die dort <lacht> arbeiten, dass sie sich dazu bekennen. Das ist der Springer-Konzern. Äh, Welche Erfahrungen hast du als ein zeitweise in Deutschland lebender Israeli, der nicht sozusagen die, die Position der Regierung vertritt, ähm, mit der Springer-Presse? Du hast Erfahrung, glaube ich. Interesting. Interesting uh, that you, um, um, you're asking about this. I do have uh, um, an experience with this and uh, it's complex in the best sense of the term. It's complex in the best sense of the term because uh, the experience was partly horrifying, partly wonderful. And uh, this shows that, um, 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 let me put it this way. I can only imagine that for Germans who have been in this business um, for long enough, uh, there may be a fixed position. It may be completely justified um, uh, in relation to Axel Springer Verlag and uh, or Springer Verlag and uh, um, uh, its outlets. Um, so I'm really speaking about my experiences. Mm -hmm. And um, if they teach something more general, um, um, other people will decide. Um, When my book came out, one of um, the most wonderful, for me at least, interviews that I did about the book, um, if you've read the book, you know that it's uncomfortable uh, mm -hmm. um, for uh, supporters of Israel, even though it's a book that supports Israel, but uh, uh, not in a way that's easy uh, uh, to digest for uh, the old school pro-Israelis. Um, 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 one of the most wonderful interviews that I did for the media was um, um, with Die uh, Literarische uh, Welt, if I think I'm correct about the, the section. Um, um, that was put on the uh, first page um, of that section with uh, a big picture and a big interview and received uh, a lot of um, interesting and positive um, uh, results. And that was an example of the openness. Mm -hmm. um, of uh, the Verlag. Just a day or two before this was published, um, an article that uh, um, uh, uh, discussed also me appeared, interestingly enough, and um, uh, uh, suggested that I support the endless in der Israel Frage, mm -hmm. uh, which is um, you know shameful not just for a German journalist to write, but uh, for a German newspaper to publish about Jews. You know, um, I think all sorts of things about all sorts of German journalists. I think that they support um, right-wing, extreme right-wing politics. I think that they uh, legitimize thereby um, also racism against Jews. Yeah, I, but their begriff end. Yeah, no, so I don't think I don't think that if I were yeah. to write, I don't think that if I were to write in uh, say Die Zeit or the Deutsche mm. Zeitung, I would uh, uh, send an article uh, that suggested that some German journalists, because they support a politics that seems to me dangerous and even to legitimize anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. I said they supported the Endlosung der Israel Frage, that this would be published. The fact that this was published, I think, is a massive, um, uh, is, is a, a real uh, issue. However, I was immediately allowed to publish um, uh, a long, aggressive, uh, uh, powerful uh, response. It mm -hmm. was published on the second page of Die Welt, um, um, only that there too, um, it was published in a censored way, um, in, and there were some issues about. Um, um, was it censored or was it redacted? It was a redu difference. It was redacted in a way that was not approved. Okay. Uh, a version, a version yeah. that was uh, printed, was a version that I explicitly said mm -hmm. multiple times. You cannot publish this version. It was published. It was still a, an extremely, let's say, mm -hmm. effective, um, um, painful response, I think I can say, published on the second page of Die Welt as a response to uh, that said article. Mm -hmm. um, and after some negotiations, Die Welt um, uh, republished the article online with all the censored uh, parts that were not um, included in the first. So um, my experience was mixed as I, I, I yeah. meant it as I said it. It was um, in part wonderful, 
because for me it was one of the um, um, most interesting, deep um, um, uh, interviews that I did in Germany when the book came up um, and received a lot of prominent attention. On the other hand, the other side was um, extremely suspicious. Interesting. Wer ist jetzt am Telefon? Der letzte Anruf für heute. Oh. Hallo, moin. moin. Um, ja, Lenny hier aus Bremen. And, um, because some of uh, the Bremisch listeners and also Bremisch students groups uh, might, might be listening. I'm also choosing to uh, speak in English. So uh, this, this is okay. You're very so, welcome. Um, I, I was taking part. Wenn um, du das auf Englisch machst, dann mache ich das auf Deutsch. Mach das doch auf, <lacht> auf Deutsch. Und, ähm, okay, so. also die, die Verabredung war, dass die Fragen, wenn es geht, auf Deutsch ge gestellt werden. Ah, okay. Lenny, yeah. hau rein. Um, also ich habe ähm, ähm, gestern an einer äh, Demonstration teilgenommen, ähm, an einer äh, pro-palästinensischen äh, Demonstration in Bremen. Ähm, und ähm, aus meiner Perspektive als ähm, per Person irgendwie mit, äh, ja, ähm, le leider nur ähm, äh, relativ oberflächlichem äh, Wissensstand irgendwie ähm, zu diesem Thema, ähm, hat man sich da unglaublich viel Mühe ge äh, gegeben, äh, sich wirklich von Anfang an ähm, zu distanzieren von ähm, allen Positionen, die man irgendwie hätte als äh, ja doch ähm, anti äh, na, 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 vor allen Dingen an, ähm, antisemitisch, ähm, an, antisemitisch äh, auszulegen. Ähm, wobei es dann doch irgendwie später ein ähm, paar Statements gab, die man möglicherweise als antizionistisch auslegen könnte. Aber da äh, fehlen, fehlt es halt auch vielen an Differenzierungsfähigkeit, äh, denke ich. Naja, ähm, also die Claims ähm, der Public Speaker waren total klar. Ähm, es wurden Flaggen gezeigt, die äh, Flaggen und Transparente äh, waren, äh, waren relativ klar und Banner auch. Keine komischen Symbole. Ähm, es blieb äh, friedlich. Ähm, es war irgendwie kein Call to Arms. Ähm, ähm, aber irg irgendwann gab es irgendwie einen kurzen Moment, äh, wo es dann hieß, äh, from the river to the sea und so weiter, ich zitiere hier nur. Ähm, und es gab halt auch ein paar Tr Transparente, wo es den Vergleich mit Apartheidsregime und ähm, zum Beispiel den Vergleich mit, äh, dass es ethnische äh, Säuberung gab. Ähm, naja, und das Medienecho daraufhin, also das, das waren die einzigen, in Anführungsstrichen sage ich jetzt mal, Art Artefakte irgendwie, von mhm. was einem möglicherweise als anti Zionismus ähm, ausgelegt werden, werden könnte. Ähm, aber von diesem Antizionismus ist dann halt das Medienecho und das Echo in Social Media irgendwie geschiftet zu, ähm, das sind aber antisemitische Tendenzen. Und ähm, vor diesem Hintergrund frage ich mich, ähm, welche Narrative oder welche, ähm, welche Slogans, welches Wording ähm, muss, äh, muss verfolgt werden von den Leuten, um nicht in diese Ecke gerückt zu werden. Und wer diktiert dieses Wording? Um, I'm not um, going to take up the, the role of uh, the uh, Haupt Sensor um, um, and decide uh, where the lines uh, cross. I think that the lines, let me, maybe it's good to also um, to end, if um, that's the last question, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to also end on that note. I think that uh, it's important to say the line can be crossed. I've seen the line being crossed many times, not uh, only in Germany, but also in New York with some of my friends. Um, I see the way people speak about Israel sometimes as uh, they speak with hate. Um, hate, um, 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 is, it's not a good uh, place to be. Uh, when hate makes you um, um, go against Jews as Jews, then um, immediately you become anti-Semitic and the statements are anti-Semitic. Um, I don't know if this surprises anybody. I think that a statement like uh, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free is actually a problematic statement. It's a problematic statement because, um, Can um, you, you know, um, if you mean it, um, uh, look, uh, when... No, no, you ask him to interrupt you now. He's interrupting. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Lenny, how are hmm? uh, can, can Can you elaborate? Um, because especially the yeah. from the river to the sea statement was taken out. And um, uh, I think this would be helpful to understand. 
Um, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, look, I said something about uh, the statement by Mas. That was, uh, um, I, I gave an example. Mas said... Um, Aus Minister um, Mas, Mas. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. um, um, Israel's right to defend itself is non-negotiable. Uh, of course, um, um, it's non-negotiable, and uh, of course, it ought not be negotiable. But the question is, what do you mean by that? And what you mean by that is um, uh, decided not just by you, by the way, not just by your intention. It's uh, decided by history, decided by language, decided by um, who else has uh, appropriated the same slogan, und so weiter und so fort. The statement, uh, from the river to the sea, Palestine would be free, has meant not just um, 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 that Palestine should be free from the river to the sea. You know, if you just take this out of context, I obviously support that. Obviously, that is also a, a type of politics that I promote with a bi-national state um, from the river to the sea for uh, Jews and Palestinians where they are equal. Um, but that's not the way that statement has been used uh, by uh, uh, Palestinian resistance organizations and terrorist organizations. Um, over the years, it has by all means uh, uh, also suggested um, um, that Palestine will be free of Jews. And um, for that reason, that statement uh, um, should make people nervous. Now, um, um, can you also use it without uh, meaning it the way it's being meant? Um, um, I think that because people are ignorant, um, they do not always know the context of what they're saying. And I think that's actually a good example of what it means to, um, to have a free discussion, um, to sometimes make a mistake. Let's say that some nice uh, uh, German... Uh, woman from Bremen uh, goes on a demonstration and shouts, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Okay, I don't think uh, anybody should go to prison or anybody should be denounced uh, for being anti-Semitic for that. They should listen, listen uh, to the fact that that statement has also been used in order to suggest throwing uh, Jews out of Israel. Um, And uh, for that reason, maybe it's not um, the right slogan um, uh, for pro-Palestinians if they are not anti-Semitic and to correct it. Um, that is at least my uh, position on that statement. I think that the demonization of that statement um, by some on Twitter, on social media, and in the press, is also an example of um, um, uh, the wrong way to go about it. Because in some ways, Palestine should be free from the river to the sea. We should say this clearly, just as we say clearly that Israel has a right to defend itself. We should insist that the meaning of propositions um, remains clear, and that um, their meaning does not spill um, um, to exactly the opposite of what hopefully they are supposed to mean. Lenny? Yeah, um, now I, I would like... Nee, mach, mach, auf, know, mach auf Deutsch, ist wirklich besser. Um, ich, ich, ich weiß nicht, ob das okay wäre, aber ähnliche, ähm, ähnliche Statements hätte ich irgendwie auch ganz gerne, zum Beispiel zu uh, Stop Ethnic Cleansing oder And Apartheid ist das, ähm, sind diese, also meines Erachtens ähm, werden, werden hier Vergleiche gezogen, die vielleicht nicht hundertprozentig präzise oder adäquat sind, ähm, aber nichts, nicht, nichtsdestotrotz eigentlich eher, ähm, ja, eine ne Art uh, let von... Me, yeah, let me, let me, I, I think I can answer this easily, the, um, mm-hmm. at, le- at least give my, my answer to this easily. Um, first, mm-hmm. people have the right to be wrong. So um, uh, even if this were wrong, then uh, I don't think that the fact or the question whether this is accurate or not um, uh, matters that much. In that case, I, uh, my personal view is that uh, those statements are, um, uh, are not wrong and that uh, uh, the situation, as we've discussed here, um, is um, teilweise apartheid, teilweise not, but definitely related to apartheid in ways that make it extremely important to say that there is apartheid and that it has to be stopped. Um, That's one thing. Second thing, ethnic cleansing. Stop the ethnic cleansing. I uh, corrected or I um, disagreed with uh, Nasrin earlier on who spoke about the actual vertreibung. Mm -hmm. I immediately explained in what ways there there is vertreibung, but not every vertreibung of some families in the southern hills of Hebron is uh, ethnic cleansing. However, um, I do think that, and I've written about this, and this was published in the German media, by the way, censored once, 
uh, I think taken basically from the printers, but then printed by another newspaper later on. Um, um, I think that um, there is a danger that the politics of transfer is being rehabilitated. Since I've written this, this has become much more of an issue. Um, 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 Itamar Ben Gvir, one of the, uh, the greatest uh, racists, um, uh, the greatest um, uh, racist leaders. This is someone who supported um, the assassination of Rabin, someone who was dancing on the roofs of Hebron when uh, Sharon uh, um, uh, received a st- uh, got a stroke. Well, Sharon was a leftist for him. This is someone who supports Bauch Goldstein, the, uh, the person who massacred um, uh, Palestinians uh, 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 praying. Um, he is now a parliament member in Israel and he is an ally of Benjamin Netanyahu. And uh, he obviously supports ethnic cleansing. I think he's not the only one. I think that the, b- besides that, the dynamics on the ground are such that one of the outlets um, um, of the situation in which you have a majority of Palestinians in the territory and the Jewish state defending itself um, uh, from this ethnic majority I think is uh, going um, in directions in which um, uh, crimes akin to ethnic cleansing um, have to be feared and they have to be stopped. So I do not think that uh, um, I'm, I would not go in the streets of Germany of all places uh, speaking about stopping uh, the ethnic cleansing right now like that. I do not think that this supports the right type of rhetoric in relations to Israel. But I am the one who actually published an article trying to explain the dangers um, um, of those developments. And when this was censored by the high uh, windows um, um, of a newspaper, um, in the end I made sure to publish it elsewhere. Um, um, So, um, yeah, that's my answer. Okay. Okay, was, was wären denn äh, deine äh, Hinweise für, für Menschen, die ähm, eine Demonstration ausrichten wollen, die ein möglichst gutes und neutrales Medienecho äh, dann hinter sich zieht? Weil ähm, aus meiner Sicht sieht es teilweise so aus, dass ähm, naja, die, ähm, es in den sozialen Netzwerken viele Leute, wie schon gesagt wird, äh, gibt, die halt, äh, was den was diesen Konflikt anbetrifft, super woke sind auf Seiten der israelischen Seite. Ähm, das heißt, sofort alles gecancelt wird, äh, was, was auch nur in Richtung Kritik gibt. Und na, naja, wie, ähm, wie lässt sich... Ähm, ähm, naja, von, von Anfang quasi schon, äh, von Anfang an Protest so organisieren, dass er dann auch ein Medienecho und ein Social Media Echo, äh, was quasi Cancel Culture Resistant ist, <lacht> ähm, ähm, ja, hint- nach sich zieht. I don't think that we live in a safe, uh, what is it, uh, what do they call it, um, safe spaces. When I teach philosophy, Uh, at the New School for Social Research, I uh, make sure to open most of my classes saying, I want to be clear, this is not a safe space. And um, um, uh, so I think the way to go about this is to say, look, the world is not a safe space. Um, we need to say what we think. We need to say, um, we need to uh, voice our harsh criticism and to listen to critique. Um, but um, we should not expect that everybody would like um, um, uh, what would say we can expect that some people will contradict us, some people will uh, um, uh, defame and accuse us, um, and uh, as part of this um, uh, place, which is not safe in that sense, um, I think that the only way, um, the, the only thing we can do is to try to speak the truth. And to speak the truth does not mean that I have the truth and I can state it. But to speak the truth means precisely that, to say what you think is true, to explain why you think it, to um, uh, then be criticized if someone else uh, criticizes you. If they just call you apostel of anti-Semitism and uh, probably shouldn't listen too much and always time on this and uh, promote a discussion like this in the best tradition of Kant's Aufklärung. <laughs> wow. Äh, sag mal, Lenny, weißt du eigentlich, dass du rufst aus, aus Bremen an, richtig? Ja? Mhm, ja. Mhm. Weißt du, dass es eine besondere Beziehung gibt äh, zwischen Bremen und Omri? Äh, nee, nee, weiß Omri nicht. wusste das auch nicht. <lacht> nee? Omri, wo, in welcher Stadt bist du geboren? Ach so, in Haifa. 
Und wie heißt die deutsche Partnerstadt von Haifa? Ja, jetzt kann ich ähm, irgendwie, ähm, ich kann mich vorstellen. Ich kann, mir, ich kann es mir vorstellen. <lacht> ja, es ist ja. Bremen. Also es gibt eine, ich habe ja 20 Jahre in, in Bremen gelebt und gearbeitet. Und die Städtepartnerschaft zwischen Bremen und Haifa ähm, war und ist wirklich eine ziemlich wichtige. Und ich weiß, äh, weil ich viel mit sowohl Politikern als auch Menschen, Jugendorganisationen angehörend äh, gesprochen habe, die waren immer, wenn es dann diese organisierten Reisen gab, wenn die aus Haifa zurückkommen, zurückkamen, waren sie tief beeindruckt. Und umgekehrt war das auch so, weil, und das ist vielleicht ein Vorteil relativ kleiner, also Bremen ist sozusagen dieser zwei städte das kleinste deutsche Bundesland, Haifa ist auch keine Riesenstadt, aber eine Hafenstadt, auf dieser kleinen Ebene eine Begegnung und ein Austausch hat ähm, ziemlich viel an gegenseitigen Verständnis äh, mit sich gebracht. Und ich kann, wenn du sagst, was kann man eigentlich tun, äh, vielleicht ist das auch eine Möglichkeit, wenn du schon in, in Bremen sitzt, äh, zu gucken, was passiert da im Moment in dieser äh, Partnerschaft zwischen diesen beiden Städten. Vielleicht kann man sich da auch im aufklärerischen Sinn, wie das äh, Omri eben nochmal gesagt hat, äh, mit, mit einschalten. Das wollte ich nur äh, zum Abschluss sozusagen mhm. als, als eigenen biografischen kleinen Hintergrund noch mit eingebaut haben. Lenny, danke schön. Vielen Dank. Ja, ja danke, danke auch. Mhm. Hat mich sehr gefreut, macht weiter so. Sehr gerne. Ähm, das waren die Anrufe. Wir, wir, es gibt einen Punkt, nee, zwei Punkte, über die möchte ich gerne noch äh, mit mir sprechen. Äh, mit dir sprechen. Mit mir, mit mir <lacht> selbst gesprochen. Ja. Auch Selbstgespräche können interessant sein, vorausgesetzt man findet einen intelligenten Gesprächspartner. The silent conversation between me and myself. Yes. <lacht> ja. Ähm, was, mir, was mir sehr gefallen hat in den letzten Tagen in Berichterstattung in deutschen Nachrichtenmedien, ähm, eins, das war wirklich so, so ein zwei Minuten Nachrichtenfilm, ich weiß noch nicht mal, woher er kam, ob es Tel Aviv war oder so, nach dem Beginn des Waffenstillstands ziemlich junge Menschen, äh, Israelis, die gesagt haben, wir haben die Schnauze voll von dieser kriegerischen Art äh, des, des Umgangs, von der Gewalt. Wir brauchen eine Verständigung mit den Palästinensern. Es war sozusagen einfach nur dieser Satz. Und es war, es war nicht eine Stimme, sondern es waren viele meine Frage ist, ist das, sind die zufällig rausgegriffen worden oder nimmst du es so wahr, dass in der jüngeren Generation, zumindest in Israel, vielleicht auch bei den Palästinensern, ähm, es einfach Stimmen oder Tendenzen gibt, die sagt, wir müssen die alten Konflikte hinter uns lassen und die Zukunft muss eine gemeinsame sein. My feeling is that um, you do not see those voices enough but you see them. I think that um, 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 life in Israel, despite everything, is relatively comfortable. Mm -hmm. People forget that. Um, it's not going to stay that for long. This is part of um, my argument, that the thought that this can be contained uh, without creating um, um, a regular um, uh, type of violence of the sort, or the type of violence that we've seen in the last two weeks or as a regular phenomenon. Those things are uh, bound to happen. But um, um, for the moment, it's relatively comfortable. And this, um, you know, this claim, um, uh, we just have to put it uh, um, uh, behind us. I think that um, this would come from some corners of people who already have that type of politics. And for that reason, they come and say, look, we want to just put it behind us. We will start to collaborate. I've seen, there are, I'm sorry that I do not remember their names. They're, they just emerged in the last demonstration uh, um, in Tel Aviv, in uh, Kikar Abima, in the, the, next to the National Theater in Tel Aviv. Uh, there was a, a large demonstration of Arabs and Jews together uh, against the event. So that was yet another example mm -hmm. of the tendencies that I was talking about that now emerge. And there were two young um, people there, a Palestinian, a young Palestinian woman, I believe from uh, Jaffa, and uh, a young um, uh, Israeli Jewish uh, uh, man uh, who um, um, 
spoke together and were um they were shockingly good i have I've not seen um um many Israeli politicians eloquent politicians eloquent people in the media speak sp- so convincingly together next to one um another um um about the prospects of um living together genuinely not as a lip service you know um Um, and for a moment, I think that's also the coverage that they received. I do not even remember their names. And yeah. I don't, then yeah. uh, a few people do. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but that was an example of a trend that you, you, know, you could think, can something emerge out of that? Can mm-hmm. something, yeah. Und die letzte Frage schließt direkt daran an. Ähm, bevor wir unser Gespräch hier begonnen haben, haben wir uns äh, zusammen angeguckt. Die Pressekonferenz von Anthony Blinken, dem US-Außenminister, und Netanyahu, äh, Blinken, ist gerade äh, im Moment äh, in, in Israel. Ähm, und du hast gesagt, äh, diese Pressekonferenz ist mehr als eine normale Pressekonferenz. Das ist eigentlich ein fundamentaler Shift in der Art und Weise, wie die US-Politik, also die Regierungspolitik, sich äußert. Was meinst du damit? <lacht> In the last um, 10 days, as I mentioned already, the tendency, if you were reading, um, um, you know, I'm also not uh, doing a research of American media, but I read it regularly, um, um, uh, the obvious suspects. And the feeling was that something completely flipped, that um, um, the reports about Israel and Palestine uh, suddenly emphasized uh, the victimhood of the Palestinians, suddenly um, that was put in the center. Suddenly, um, um, there was questioning not just um, of um, um, the policies of the government, but also the foundations of um, um, the causes of the situation. Um, going all the way back uh, to the notion of a Jewish state, going all the way back to apartheid, und so weiter und so forth. As part of this dynamic, the feeling was that it's obvious that Israel begins to lose the Democratic Party. We've seen those um, uh, forces already before with, uh, let's call it, the more radical wing of the Democratic Party. But um, 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 we've seen that trickling down to the, uh, say, the central reports of the New York Times and so forth. And um, um, I was extremely interested to see the press conference uh, that we watched together because, um, look, the, the, uh, the American government still officially supports the two-state solution um, um, for the time being. But it was extremely, um, 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 it was remarkable to see um, 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 the American Secretary of State standing next to uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and does not affirming the two-state solution. Does not saying, um, we still stand by the two-state solution. Instead, um, he was speaking about the full equality of uh, Palestinians and Jews. He was speaking about uh, the lives of Palestinians that matter the same as the life of Jews and so forth. Um, it's possible that this was just a mistake. It's possible that uh, he said a hundred other times two-state solution um, and not in this press conference. It's also possible that um, when such a, an experienced career diplomat is standing there and he's not speaking about the two-state solution, but rather he's speaking about full equality, That's at least, again, a glimpse of um, the diplomatic tsunami um, that I mentioned um, um, earlier on that uh, Ehud Barak uh, uh, warned Israelis from. The beginning of it. Dankeschön. Thanks. Omri Böhm, das waren tolle zwei Stunden. <lacht> War das schon drei? Drei und halb. Drei und halb. Drei. Ja, also, wir das, haben doch das Spaß gemacht, weil wir ja, haben es nicht, ja, nicht bemerkt. Das ist ein, ein Running Gag, weil dieses Format heißt eigentlich die Politik Sprechstunde. Mhm. Singular. Und jetzt sind wir schon bei zwei Stunden. Ähm, ich glaube, wir hätten auch noch vier Stunden weitermachen können. Ähm, danke dir. Vielleicht setzen wir das bei Gelegenheit fort. Ich, du bist jetzt erstmal, glaube ich, eine Weile nicht in Deutschland. Das stimmt. Noch ein paar Monate in Deutschland und dann wieder in Amerika. Ich hoffe, entweder davor oder wenn du dann wiederkommst, können wir das 
fortsetzen. Ich fand das toll. Danke für eure Beteiligung und Fragen. Sorry bei allen, die nicht rangekommen sind. Ähm, der Redaktionspraktikant Thilo hat sein Bestes <lacht> Entschuldigung, äh, gegeben. Ja, das, das war jetzt kein freudscher Huster. Nein, nein. Ähm, er hat sein Bestes gegeben, aber manchmal brauchen Antworten ein bisschen länger, weil sie in die Tiefe gehen sollen. Also, sorry bei allen, die nicht äh, dran gekommen sind. Ähm, noch zwei Sachen. Das eine ist, morgen 16 Uhr live hier, jung und naiv, mit Klaus-Dieter Hommel. Das ist der Vorsitzende der Eisenbahn- und Verkehrsgewerkschaft. Ihr wisst, es gibt ähm, einen vor der Tür stehenden Streik bei der Bahn. Das wird bestimmt ein interessantes Gespräch. Wie ihr dieses Format unterstützen könnt, worüber wir uns sehr freuen, wisst ihr, im Abspann werdet ihr dann sehen, wer das in den vergangenen, in den vergangenen vier Wochen gemacht hat. Der Dank nochmal an den Redaktionspraktikanten und an Technical Director Alexander, the one and only Tyler. Und dann wurde mir ein Zettel reingereicht, der Chat wünscht sich ein Statement zum Werderabstieg. Was soll ich sagen? Ähm, er ist schmerzhaft und er ist verdient. Die Mannschaft hat so schlecht gespielt, sie hätte es einfach nicht verdient gehabt, nochmal irgendwie mit Hängen und Würgen äh, sich ein Jahr weiter in die erste Liga zu quälen. Es war einfach, der Abschied war, der Abstieg war verdient und äh, immerhin er, äh, eröffnet das die Möglichkeit, man muss ja auch das Positive sehen, zu Traditionsduells hoher Güte, Werder gegen Schalke, Werder gegen den HSV, Hansa. Werder gegen Hansa Rostock, Werder gegen Hannover 96. Das sind alles wunderbare Chancen, in dem das geht dann um, äh Fußball. Fußball, ja. <lacht> no, I knew that. Come on. Ja. Yes, you knew that. Sure. Are you interested in sports? Sports, yes, but uh, not in soccer. What's your favorite sport then? No. <lacht> Horse riding, horseback riding. Horseback riding? I haven't done that myself for a long time. Yeah. But you did it? Oh, yeah. Previously? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So du kannst, du kannst galoppieren? But running, I like, running is my main sport. I, yeah. I, I used to do this competitively. Okay. Yeah. Really? A little bit. Short distance sprint, middle, medium? Um, I ran a few marathons uh -huh. and a few uh, 10 kilometers. What was your best time on marathon? Well, it was not that good, but also not that bad. It was um, 317. Oh, come on. That's good. That's pretty good. That was in Boston, mm -hmm. 2004, 5. Gut. Jetzt, jetzt landen wir dann eben doch. Let's move on from that. <lacht> weil du die lange Strecke liebst und weil du vorhin, als es darum ging, wie sieht eigentlich die Perspektive aus, wie kann die Vision wahr werden, da hast du ja gesagt, wie lange Zeit das braucht. Und da sind wir dann von Kant bei Max Weber, du kennst diesen berühmten Satz, Politik ist das beharrliche Bohren dicker Bretter <lacht> mit Leidenschaft und Augenmaß. Right? Ja. Yeah. Ja, danke, dass ihr diesen Marathon ausgehalten habt. Wir sehen uns, äh, wenn ihr wollt, in zwei Wochen wieder mit dann einer vielleicht etwas kürzeren Ausgabe. Aber wer weiß. <lacht> Tschüss. <lacht>